Hello everyone, welcome to What If Deku Was the Son of Captain Marvel Part 1. Before we start please go support I am Kimon777 for writing that awesome fanfic. My mom was who? Izuku Midoriya received another fist to the face by his old childhood friend turned bully. He slid down the well of the alley they were in and looked up trying to nurse his bruised cheek while Kakin and his cronies chuckled and laughed at his misfortune. Kakin. What was it that you buckin said? I believe you said some shit about not have the 3218 yen and 36 as you promised me. Izuku. I, I never promised you that Kaka. He was then kicked in the face by the ash blonde who then grabbed him harshly by the hair and said. Kakin. I've had to deal with you and your damn muttering all day long, and now you're gonna tell me that you don't have the money to pay me for the shit I had to sit through. Izuku. Kakin I'm sorry but. He then was cut off yet again by a foot in his stomach that made him lean over to the side and start hacking up saliva. Hacken. PFT whatever, you're not even worth it. You quirkless wanted. He and his goons then left home, leaving Izuku there by himself on the floor as he balled his fist. He gritted his teeth and began to beat his fist into the concrete feeling a stinging pain, but kept going nonetheless. After a few more minutes, he made his way home with some of the students from school, giggling at him about his injuries, knowing that they came from Katsuki. It was just crazy to them that Izuku was just as tall 51060 as the blonde, but was still bullied by him. Though the lanky and unathletic build along with the blonde streaks in his green hair was probably the reason. After making it home, he quickly tried to go to his room only for his mom to stop him. Inko. Izuku, you got some my. Izuku. She stopped, seeing her son's injuries. Inko. Guy I iced. She stared at her son's face and ran to him as he looked away. Inko. What happened? Izuku. And nothing really, I it's fine mom. Inko. It was that Bakugo boy again, wasn't it? Izuku. What? No. She gave him a firm stare, but he looked away and said. Izuku. I it really wasn't. Inko. Then tell me, Izuku, who did this? Izuku. PFFT, haha. <laughs> Inko. Well. Izuku. It was the stairs. Inko. The stairs. Izuku. Why yay? Inko. And you're sure that what you want to go with? Izuku. Why yes. Inko. Izuku. In the next moment, Inko took her son by his hand and made her way out with Izuku in tow, as he kept on expressing how he was fine and all, but she wasn't trying to hear it one bit. Izuku. Mom seriously it's. Inko. No, it isn't. Izuku. Inko stopped walking and looked up at her son saying. Inko. I have had enough of this Izuku. From the day that that boy got his quirk, he's done nothing but bully you. And the only thing you keep doing is defending him, don't you feel like this is enough? He's made it clear that he isn't going to stop, and as your mother, I will not stand for it anymore. Before the green blonde could say anything back, she pulled him off again, trying to voice his opinion on why this will bite him harder, but she still didn't listen. They came up on the Bakugo house with Inko ringing the doorbell. Izuku. Mo. Inko. SHH. Batsuki Bakugo answered the door, and as soon as she saw Inko she smiled and said. Batsuki. Huh. Oh hey Inko how you been? Inko gave her best friend a quick smile. Inko. Hey there, Mitsuki. Mitsuki. Everything good. You don't look okay. Inko. Well. She glared and showed the older blonde her son, saying. Inko. That's because I'm not. The mother of Kakin was surprised by the injuries, but then she glared as well before stomping her way up to her son's room. The two Midoriyas then heard what sounded like a lot of swearing and things being thrown before yelling and name-calling, but then. Uam. The two heard an explosion that they knew didn't coming from Mitsuki, things were quiet until they heard. Mitsuki. G R R R R R R R R R R. Then another boom happened, but it didn't come from an explosion. It came from a fist to the face with Kakin being hurled downstairs, crashing into the dinner table. Kakin. The buck is your problem you crazy old hag. He then looked towards the open front door to see Deku and his mom who gave him the hardest glare she could muster before. Mitsuki grabbed her son by the hair and dragged him to the two and demanded. Mitsuki. Answer my question, and don't you dare lie did you do this? Hakan. What? Mitsuki. Did you do this to Inko's kid? Hakan. No why the buck would I? Mitsuki. I told you not to buck and lie. Hakan. I'm not just ask Deku, he'll tell you the truth. Inko. You know that he won't because you bully him. Hakan. No I don't go on Deku, tell them. Izuku. Izuku gritted his teeth yet again before looking at his mother who hoped he would tell the truth, she knew that if he did, she could go to the administrators and have something done about it. Maybe even a restraining order, but that only depended on his answer, if he says no she can't do anything. 
The blonde greenette then looked at Mitsuki who shook her head, telling him not to lie for her son. She knew that because of his strong quirk that he became a pompous asshole and was probably using it for the wrong reasons. He then looked at Kakin which made him flinch and almost step back, because the face he made was one that promised a lot of pain if he didn't hurry this shit up. Izuku. And no. Inko. Izuku. Izuku. He didn't do it like I said I fell down the stairs. Mitsuki. Kakin. He see. It's like I told you. I didn't do shit so let me go. Mitsuki glared at her son before pushing him off to the side as he started to go upstairs. Izuku looked at the ground before giving Kakin one last look that told him that tomorrow would be worse for him, well Mitsuki said. Mitsuki. Hey look, you're a good and smart kid, seriously, but you know as well as we do that if you were to be hit by a truck, Kitsuki would most likely be driving. You don't need to defend him. Izuku. Mitsuki. Sai sorry Inko. Inko. No it's okay Sai come on Izuku. Izuku then bowed to the blonde and said. Izuku. S sorry for the trouble. Mitsuki. No problem Kitsuki get your ass back down here. Was all she said as she closed the door. Well Izuku and his mother walked back home. He looked at her to see that she was very sad, she really thought her son could get over this fear he has for his ex-friend, but was wrong. He sighed and said. Izuku. I'm sorry mom. Inko. No it's okay hey you're just like your father he never did like trouble either. He was always a peaceful man that attracted trouble whenever he didn't want to. Izuku. Really. Inko stopped walking, remembering a close friend of hers, which almost brought her to tears. It was just her and her son. She could see her friend's features on Aizu, the adorably handsome face, the blonde streaks and ocean blue eyes. They were every bit alike. As soon as they got home. Inko patched Izuku up before starting to make dinner, though with a blonde greenette, he couldn't help but wonder about his father. He didn't know much about him besides what his mother used to tell him. Then again, besides the green hair, he couldn't see any resembling connection of him to his mom or even dad. He looked at the picture on the coffee table and picked it up to see the man that he did not recognize, but knew that he wasn't in any way his father. The man had on glasses with brown hair and a scruffy beard which made Izuku furrow his brow. He then took it over to his mother and asked. Izuku? Mom? Who is the man in this picture? Inko looked at the old photo and knew what this was about. Izuku knew that this man wasn't his real father, but she said. Inko. Heh, that's your father silly, who else? Izuku looked at the picture again before his mom and asked. Izuku. He is. Inko. Of course. Izuku. He sure doesn't look like it. If that's the case, where do the streaks of blonde come from? Inko. Whom I wouldn't know exactly. She lied. She really didn't want to tell him yet, but Izuku saw right through this, he knew this wasn't his dad, and he knew his mom was lying, as he then gave her a look that made her tense up as she then looked away from him. Izuku. Mom. Inko. Sai. Izuku. You've been telling me that since I was a kid, but I know this isn't him. Why did you take a picture with a man that isn't dad? Inko was tired of keeping this lie up, her son was going to find out sooner or later, not only that but, he turns 15 tomorrow, and she was asked by Izuku's dad not to tell him until that time. She looked at Izu and said. Inko. To keep up the lie but I want any more. Izu. Inko. Tomorrow's your birthday you know so how about I tell you then as your gift. Izuku didn't know what she had to say, but it sounded like there was a lot, he then nodded before she started fixing their plates. It was now the next day in class, and it was slowly killing the blonde greenette from how boring it was, the only thing he could think of was who his dad was. He looked out the window as the teacher went on about passing out career choices, but then he heard Kakin's ego which rubbed him the wrong way, he remembers when they used to be cool, but now he was nothing but a. Izuku. Spoiled brat. He didn't expect his old childhood buddy to hear that, but when he looked up he saw a happy evil grin that said, you're dead. Teacher. Oh yeah Midoriya PFFT didn't you apply to UA as well Snickers. Everyone then started to laugh while Izu drowned at them, but it was Kakin who slammed his fist in his face, making him hit the ground saying. Kakin. You at UA. Get real why would they want you when they could have me, you quirkless dead weight. You're nothing, you got a better chance at throwing yourself out the window and hoping that you get a quirk in the next life. Student. Hey man cool it that's going a little too far. Student 2. Yay lighten up. Hakan. Shut it you extras he needs to hear this shit. Aizu put his head down as Kakin said. Hakan. You wanna know why 80% of everyone on earth has quirks? It's because the other 20% is dying out and you know what that means don't you, Deku? You're not fit to live anymore, your quirless ass is gonna die out soon, while the rest of us will be laughing in your face. Teacher. That's enough Bakugo. Hakan. You want to be a hero ha huh? I bet even All Might would tell you to hang it up. 
Your only protection is your mom and boy is she annoying. Izuku's eyes went wide, talking about him he got, but his mom had nothing to do with this. Hakan. I couldn't cared less if you ratted me out yesterday or not cause either way, I'm still going to UA while you'll be at home crying. So if you feel like whining again, go tell your fat hitch of a mom about it, I'm sure she'll. Aizu shook with answer as he then got up and slammed his fist into Katsuki's face, which made everyone look at him with surprise, he finally did it. Katsuki. Izuku. Leave my mom out of this. Hakan himself stared at the weakling who actually hit him with surprise before anger as he started to run at him. The teacher stopped him and told him to go cool off while also wrongfully giving Izuku detention. Right now, Izuku just slid down to the floor, aching in pain from the steaming bruise on his right arm and the bruise on his ribs. He looked back up to see Kakin who breathed out heavily from beating him, while his goons tried to stop him. Goon. Hey come on man, he's had enough. Goon 2. You go any further and someone sees, you'll never get into UA. Hakan glared at them, but they had a point, if he didn't stop his dream of being the richest hero ever would be washed away. Plus, he already paid Deku back with the explosion to his arm. He took him but the shirt and slammed him against the wall saying. Hakan. That was pretty balsy, sucker punching me in the face, but it doesn't mean shit you still can't beat me, and you sure as hell aren't better than me. Now go die somewhere. He then let him go and walked off with his friend, while Izuku rested there for a minute. He looked up at the sky starting to lose faith that anyone who didn't have a quirk couldn't do anything. He balled his fist as this before deciding to get up and get moving. Seeing that his mother texted him he decided to cut through a tunnel. Izuku. I hate this, why can't people treat each other good despite them not having quirks? I know I can do whatever I put my mind to, right? Then why do I feel like it's not possible anymore? Haha. <laughs> Izuku then heard something monstrous behind him and looked back to see some green glob a few seconds away from catching him, so he moved out of the on instinct. Izuku. What the? He couldn't get out everything as he moved out the way and again, losing his footing and dropping to the floor. He then tried to get up and make a run for it, but the sludge villain grabbed him and yanked him back towards his body, starting to suffocate and envelope him. Sludge villain. I gotta tell you kid. This is a real breakthrough. Because of you, I have a meat suit that'll help me get out of town. You may not be a real hero, but as of right now, you're my hero. Hehehe. <laughs> Izuku was now starting to get angry again, but this time, it was more than before, who gave this guy the right to use people at his leisure. Nobody told him to cause crimes, nobody told him to steal. So why use him for his own selfish use? Izuku. Grrrr. Sludge villain. Ooh oh I see I got myself a feisty one. The blonde greenette's eyes then started to glow gold with his anger rising, but before he could do anything. Texas smash. A powerful blast of air hit him and the villain, splattering him all over the wall, while the teen fell to the floor unconscious. When he awoke, he saw his hero, the legend himself, the symbol of peace, All Might squatting down in front of him and patted his face to make him wake up. He blinked at the hero a few times before. Izuku. Why I I I. All Might. Hey hey no need to yell. Izuku. Why 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 you're All Might. All Might. True. Izuku. Hi. All Might. Hello young man. It's nice to see that you're up. Now, I must be going so that I can drop this villain off. He patted his side pocket saying that and then jumped off, but then, something didn't feel right, when he looked down, he saw Izuku latching onto him. All Might. What are you doing young man you were supposed to stay on the ground? Izuku. I am sorry but please I just have one question is all, just one. Plus, if I let go I'll die. It didn't click in the one hero's mind that the kid could die, but once it did, he said. All Might. Okay okay. Izuku. Thank you. All Might could feel himself getting weaker as he cursed to himself, but he believed he could make it, at least a little. Once landing he quickly turned to the young man and asked. All Might. Now, I hate to be rude, but I can't stay in one place very long, so what is your question? Izuku. Why yes I'm sorry, but I just have to know. All Might. Izuku looked down and said. Izuku. Everyone bullies me for it and think that I'm weak when I say I want to be a hero, my own best friend left me when he got his quirk, but I wanted to know can anyone become a hero even without a quirk. All Might's smile decreased as Izuku said. Izuku. I've always wanted to be a hero just like you, and not for fame or fortune or even connections, I just always wanted to be the one to look around and see people waving at me with smiles. To be the one who they can count on, I really wanted that, but everyone keeps on telling me that. All Might. You can't. Izuku smiled thinking he understood him. Izuku. Yes exactly. All Might. No young man, I'm saying you can't. Izuku. The shattering of glass was all that Izuku could hear, his dreams crushed. Hakan. 
You want to be a hero ha I bet even All Might would tell you to hang it up. That sentence echoed through his head as All Might crosses his arms and said. All Might. I apologize if me being blunt hurt you young man, but it isn't possible. You have no quirk so your best bet is probably a fireman or a police officer, but I believe being a hero is way out of your reach. Your intentions are good, but that could only get you so far. Izuku. All Might. Try something else. You won't be where you want, but there are a lot of other ways you can be a hero. With that, the hero left, jumping off the building and again leaving Izuku to himself. The boy was crushed and he couldn't bear the pain anymore, as he hit his knees and cried, his hero really told him he couldn't be a hero. That cut him deep that Kakan was right. Was his dream really that stupid? It couldn't have been, is it not right for him to make it in this world as a quirkless teen? All of these questioned but no answer to them. A few hours later, he got calls and texts from his mom, but he didn't feel like answering them. He decided to take a walk, but glared at the nearby TV shops, telling them how All Might saved a boy from said sludge villain from earlier. He felt even worse knowing that he was at fault for the villain getting loose, but that didn't sting nearly as much as what happened later. He started to turn the corner, but then he saw All Might again, talking to Kakin about something. All Might. Sorry I was late saving you young man, I hope you bear no bad feelings for me. Izuku hid behind the corner and listened. Kakin. TCH whatever it's not like I needed your help anyway. I could have handled that jackass on my own. Izuku. The hostage earlier was Kakin. All Might. I have no doubt about that. Your quirk is quite strong at your age which brings me to my next question. Are you trying to become a hero? Hakan smiled and said. Hakan. One better than you. All Might. Hehe <laughs> fire, I like that. Then I have an offer for you. Hakan. Izuku. An offer. All Might. Since my fight with Toxic Chainsaw, I have been looking for a successor to grant my quirk to, and I think I just might have found him. Hakan. Izuku's eyes went wide, was he hearing this right? All Might. It doesn't seem like you need much training or a need to bulk up, since you're already in tip-top shape, so I will ask you this. Izuku got on all fours grabbing his chest as more tears hit the ground, it hurt, so much. His hero told him that he couldn't be a hero because he had no quirk, but he was about to give up his power to someone who really didn't even need it, and what's worse was that he was about to give up the power to his bully. All Might. My power is known as one for all, a quirk that stockpiles power itself the more it's handed around. You will be the eighth vessel for it. Will you accept the responsibility of being the new symbol of peace? Hakan's eyes went wide before he smiled happily saying. Hakan. Hell yay. All Might. Excellent now. As All Might was finishing, Izuku had walked off, tightening his grip on his backpack strap. The day was the worst day of his life, and it was his birthday, he turned 15, and he felt like he didn't even want to exist anymore. He came up to the door of his house, opening it only for his mother to lunge at him with teary eyes. Inko. Oh my god Izuku I was so worried. Izuku. Sorry mom, I had detention and got held up. She looked at her soon with a questionable expression, first, he's never had detention, and second it looked like he's been crying. He hasn't done that since he found out that he was quirkless, so whatever he saw or witnessed must have really hurt him. She grabbed for his face and asked. Inko. Izuku, what's wrong? Have you been? She was cut off by his fake smile saying. Izuku. I am fine mom, really. Inko. No, you're. Izuku. Mom, please. He now had an expression of complete depression as he said. Izuku. Just just let it go. But that he started to make his way to his room, but then Inko stopped him. Inko. I I know that you're hurting, maybe something you didn't like happened but. Izuku. Mom. Inko. But I promise you. Inko then brought out what looks like a hologram disc of sorts saying. Inko. You'll feel better after watching this. Izuku. Izuku took the contraption and asked. Izuku. What's in it? Inko. Something from your your real mother. He now looked at his supposed mom with surprise. What the hell did she mean by that? Inko. I know I hid the truth from you, but I don't have to anymore. Izuku. Anymore? Inko. Your real mother was the one who asked me to give this to you on your 15th birthday. Izuku looked back at the machine and went to the couch, setting it on the table before clicking it. The disc lit up and out of it stood a six-foot-tall, beautiful and toned woman with short blonde hair and blue eyes to match. She looked around at first before looking down, right into Izuku's eyes. The boy tensed up, he knew this was his mother, he could just feel it. The woman wore what looked like skin jumpsuit with a brown leather jacket she said. Hello son. Izuku. Go hard. I doubt you would know who this is and all, but if you're as smart as me, you would know that I am your real mom. Izuku. It's shocking, I know, but I'm sorry I couldn't be there after you were born. 
But there was an evil that needed to be dealt with which costed me my life. Izuku. I hope you don't think I left you or anything because I didn't I loved you very much, and as for your actual dad hey hey, we aren't going to talk about him, but anyway, let's move on to the reason I made you wait so long to know the truth. I'm pretty sure that's the part you want to get to the reason I asked your Inko to show you this when you turned 15 was mainly cause that's when you would most likely start showing signs that my powers would be passed on to you. Unlike everyone else, you won't gain that thing they call quirks, but actual powers instead. Izuku. What? These powers were born with me, but because of an explosion I can do so much more, which means you can too, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit you with a big liner hey hey you aren't all the way human. Part of you is, but the other not so much. When I first came to this other earth, I was so wondrous on everyone having some type of power whether it was useful or not, and obviously villains came forth. I helped fight them back with this other man who started calling himself All Might. Izuku. After a few years, we became great friends, he even vowed to help you if he knew that you were born, though I decided to keep that from him. I wanted to see the look on his face when he saw a boy pulling out powers similar to mine. This was crazy to Izuku his mom used to work with All Might, but how, he's never seen that in the videos, unless his mom helped him out with small mission or troubles. He looked back at the hologram as his mother said. I know this is a bit sudden, I mean I don't even know you and you don't know me, but I love you son. Izuku. It may not mean anything to you but I do, from the very first moment I held you in my arms, I fell in love all over again. To think I have a son and I can't even see him. Heh, life can be cruel, but no matter what, you keep your head up. His mother then floated as her hair stood up and her eyes glowed white. Peril. Back on my planet, they called me a lot of names, Ms. Marvel, Ace, Warbird, hehe <laughs> even Cheeseburger, but my name is Carol Danvers. I left you with Inko because she's a good friend of mine and has helped me since I got stuck here, kid, I believe you can be the greatest hero to ever live. Izuku. Peril. Show them your power son, I believe in you. But that the disc cut off leaving Inko and Izuku speechless. He may not know who his father was, but he finally met his mother. And as an added bonus she tells him the reason he won't get a quirk. It's because he already has power, he just doesn't know how to use them. He turned to Inko saying. Izuku. That was really. Inko. Your real mother. Izuku. And you aren't. Inko shook her head with guilt saying. Inko, I'm sorry Izuku. After Carol had you, she asked me to take care of you which I did. My husband died long before she got here, and I've always wanted a child, so she gave you to me. Izuku. And I really have. Inko. That's the reason why I didn't look so worried, I believed what she said. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you think I was being selfish. Izuku. W well, if that's true then why is my hair? Izuku. Green and blonde. Well, that part confused me a little too. Your mother's hair is blonde, yet, yours comes out green blonde. I guess we'll just have to chalk it up as a coincidence. I'm sorry. Izuku. And no it's okay wait, did she just say that I'm not all the way human, does that mean I'm like part alien or something? Inko. It does. Izuku. Ha but where are the antennas? The green skin and big eyes. Inko. Aizu, sweetie, calm down. Izuku. Eh sorry, but what did she mean when she said she came to this other earth? Inko. That part freaked me out too. Turns out there's a lot of other Earths out there in the universe. Izuku. And she came from one of them. Inko nodded as Izuku looked at his hands. Izuku. So um blush what kind of powers she had. Inko smiled and said. Inko. Your mom was so amazing. She had a lot of powers, like super strength, speed, flight. Izuku. Mom had wings. Inko. Hey no, Carol could fly without them. Inko then floated and said. Inko. Even taught me how to. And how my quirk is basically telekinesis. Izuku. Mom you're floating. Inko. I know, it is pretty cool, isn't it? Does does this mean that you still see me, as your mom? Izuku. Inko. W well, I did lie to you, and you finally found out who your real mother is, so. Izuku. Well, yay she's my real mom and yay, I wish I could have gotten to know her. But you raised me, I don't say it, but I'm lucky to have you, and finding out that my real mom is actually pretty awesome is always a plus. Thanks for everything mom. Inko stared at Aizu before looking down with a smile, she held herself knowing that she didn't lose her son saying. Inko. Your mom had these blasts of energy called photon blasts. She was untouchable when it came to fighting, heh, she could even breath in space and much more. Izuku. Wow and I can do that stuff. Inko. You sure can, but I don't think it'll come to you all at once. Carol was strong, but you're still from this earth, so it'll probably come to you one or two at a time. The teen then looked back at the disc before he took on a determined expression. Izuku. Mom. 
Binko. Hmm. Izuku. I'll be gone early in the morning to Dagoba Beach. I wanna test myself and get stronger. Binko. Ha that'll be your best bet. You have to bulk yourself up if you're going to use your powers, the stronger you are physically, the more energy you will have to use your abilities. Izuku. Right night mom. Binko. W wait at least have dinner and cake. It is your birthday. Izuku. I almost forgot. Bank heist. The next morning, Izuku woke up early, way earlier than he meant to and got himself ready, putting on his tracksuit and shoes, before fixing himself a bowl of cereal. He was really excited and nervous about the disc he saw yesterday. He was excited to find out that he doesn't have a quirk, but actual powers. He also hoped that his mom's abilities didn't skip a generation. Binko came down a few minutes later, wondering where all the noise was coming from to see her son, quickly eating some cereal, so she decided to try and join him, but he was already done. She then saw him run upstairs before coming back down with a book in his hand, as he then tried to make his way out. Binko. Izuku. Izuku. Oh why yay mom. Binko. Smiles do great out there. I know you'll probably be out there all day, so I'll stop by with some food, okay? Izuku smiled at his mother and said. Izuku. Yay see you then. With that, the teen was gone, it was a Saturday so there was no school, he made his way to the beach to see nothing but junk. He knew that it was most likely washed up on land from the ocean, but that didn't sway him. He came to the beach because he wanted to test if he had his mom's super strength, so he quickly looked around for a test subject and found an old truck. He smiled and ran over to it and with all of his muscle, pushed the vehicle but It proved to be more powerful than him. Izuku. Come on you stupid rust bucket. He pushed it more and more, but only managed to get it an inch forward, which made him sigh in frustration. Deciding to move on to the next thing, he started to jump as high as he could, seeing if he could fly. He wasn't going to try jumping off a building when he couldn't even activate his powers, so jumping up or off the powerful old truck was the next best thing. After a few minutes of trying, he stopped and dipped his head in depression, but his will of fire to keep going quickly came back. He then got into a tracker's stance before shooting off full speed in a random direction, but he quickly fell to the sand being out of breath and stamina. He didn't really take into account that his body was still lanky. Izuku. Gasp that's what it is it's just like mom said, I need to work out to really get somewhere with these power, how did I forget about that? He then took a deep breath and started with one push up. That was it. Izuku. It hurts it hurts so much. He tried again but, again, he stopped when his body started to hurt even more. Hours later, he decided to take a break thinking about how if these powers were actually something he has. Then he wouldn't need to work out, he should already know how to bring them forth, but he doesn't. He laid his back into the truck sighing and looking up at the blue sky, before feeling something tap his knee. Inko. Not so much luck. The blonde greenette sat up and looked at his mother and shook his head, feeling like he couldn't really do it. His mother brung his face back up and said. Inko. Aizu, I know you have these powers, but I never said it would be easy, did you try working it out? Izuku stood up a little upset and said. Izuku. I did and all I could get was ten stupid push-ups. What if mom was wrong? Inko. We don't know that. Izuku. You're right, we don't. He sighed with anger. Izuku. I mean, if mom was so awesome, why would I have her powers? It's not like I'm that special anyway. He then started to pace the sand with watching him before she asked. Inko. What do you mean by that? Izuku. I mean Kakin he he always gets what he wants because of that explosion quirk of his. Seeing as how her son couldn't hold in his frustration anymore, she then pulled out some hot tea and listened. Izuku. I mean, he's strong, smart, and everyone thinks that his ego is awesome. He told me that I couldn't be a hero because I was quirkless and said that even All Might would tell me the same thing which he did. Inko. You met with All Might. Izuku. Yay, after he saved me from that sludge villain from yesterday. Inko. You were attacked wait, what did he tell you? Izuku. That I couldn't be a hero without a quirk. Distant thunder booming. Inko. Suddenly, huge rain clouds started to form over the entire beach, which made Inko look up a little fearful as she said. Inko. Um Izuku honey. Izuku. I idolized him I can't believe mom even worked with a guy like that someone who really told a kid that he couldn't be a hero, it hurt me so much, that's why I took so long yesterday. Izuku's eyes then started to glow white as his hand sparked with light and yellow energy, though the green blonde hasn't even noticed because he was too busy venting. Inko. Um Izuku sweetie can you calm down for me? Izuku. I just I want to prove them all wrong. Huge thunderclap. Izuku. So what if I'm lanky and stuff, I can work out, I can become a hero, but for my own hero to tell me I can't broke me not to mention he Bakugo is gonna have another quirk, and he didn't even deserve it. 
His hair then glowed a little as he looked at his mom saying. Izuku. I mean, wouldn't that make you mad, mom? He waited for an answer, but all his mother did was stare upwards. Izuku. A oh, mom? She then pointed her finger towards the sky, which made him give her a questionable look before he took in the area. It was sunny not too long ago, so why was there thunderclouds? Izuku. What the? He then felt a warm sensation on his hands, so he looked at them to see the aforementioned light surrounding his hands and saw his arms along with the rest of his body was glowing. He slowly looked at her as she then pulled out a camera, still awestruck, and took a picture of her baby boy's first power development. Izuku. This is all me. Inko nodded as his powers started to dissipate and the weather went back to being sunny. A little while later, he and his mom sat on the truck as he said. Izuku. I see, so my powers are latched onto what I feel. Inko. It seems that way, though they seem to come from a dark place. Izuku. A dark place. Inko. You were frustrated, angry, jealous, and depressed all at the same time. I honestly think that the reason you can activate them with a clear mind is probably because you're still holding on to all of those negative emotions, and that could affect your power. He stared at his mom for that one, she did have a point, he didn't want to become a hero, using anger to fuel his problems that was Kakin shtick, not his. He thought about it and decided to think about everything that's happened, he really didn't like how Kakin cast him out to be the weakling, but he also didn't like how the villain tried to use him for his own gain. Inko heard thunder in the distance, which meant that it was coming back so she said. Inko. Izuku. But he kept on focusing on his abilities. What really hit him hard was All Might, he not only told him he couldn't be what he wanted, but then went and gave Kakin his quirk. He hated it so much, even after the blonde talked about his mom, who's been in his corner all this time. Inko saw her son's eyes glow a fiery yellow and tried to call out to him again, but then the team let it go. He was still upset, but not as he was earlier, as his eyes went from fiery to the soft glow of yellow. There was a strong wind that picked up, but it wasn't violent, just calm. He couldn't hold on to all of that hate and anger, he had to let it go. What All Might sees in Kakin is their business, not as he wasn't even supposed to be there. Izuku. Inhale exhale. Inko saw the wind calm down even more before looking at her son, Izuku didn't like that the villain tried to use him, but that's what heroes are for. And he could very well use his powers to make sure that doesn't happen. So what if Kakin gets All Might's quirk, maybe he'll finally change for the better maybe. He then smiled, but for his mother, this was different, it wasn't fake like it has been since he was four, it was real. He then brought out his hands and focused on them as the light came back which made him smile even more. He looked at his mom and said. Izuku. Mom. Can you get up? I'm gonna move that truck. Inko smiled as well with a determined look and said. Inko. Right to your best son. She moved away from the rust bucket and pulled out a video camera as Izuku stretched and took the truck by the side, doing his best to lift with his legs. Only to fail. Izuku. Oh come on. He struggled again and again, but no progress was shown, he really wanted that super strength, but it seems as though he wasn't ready for it. Inko. That's okay, son. It's only the first day. Try flying. He nodded and got on the truck and jumped off, he started to float which made him smile, but then he fell, hitting his head on the back of the truck. Izuku. Oh. oh, oh. Inko. Izuku. Izuku. I'm okay. Inko. W well one more and we'll go inside. Super speed. Your mother would always use that to get away from the press. He then nodded and focused everything he had on his legs he glared at the distance before Inko started to count down. Inko. Okay 3 2 1. Hearing his mother's words get slower and slower, he looked back at her to see that she was moving really slow like slow motion slow. He looked at his body and saw that it vibrated before walking up to his mom, but when he did, he didn't mean to end up in front of her so fast. Was this his speed? Deciding to answer his own question, he ran to the other side of the beach in a mere five seconds, he looked at his hands again and smiled with tears of joy, he was making progress real good progress. Izuku? Yes. He then made his way back over to his mom and saw Tha she was still in the midst of saying go. Izuku. How the heck do I stop this? Suddenly he could hear his heart in his ears, beating abnormally fast, so he assumed that he just needed to calm down. The teen took a few deep breaths and before he knew it. Inko. Go. She pulled out her camera as fast as she could to catch him, but didn't seem him until she looked to the side and flinched. Inko. W wa. Izuku. Mom I have super speed. Inko. You did it already. They soon got home with Izuku eating mountains and mountains of food as he started to tell his mom how his light and gold energy felt plus the speed. She could do nothing but smile and giggle silently at him as he kept on with his experience before the two decided to turn in early. 
For the next few days, Izuku came to school not with a sad expression, but with a happy smile on his face which took everyone for a loop. Especially Kakin who glared in his direction, expecting him to look fearful, but the teen didn't even look his way or even pay attention to him as he walked in. The teacher wondered if the boy finally cracked under all the teasing and bullying or just lost his virginity, but decided not to pay too much attention to him. It was probably something stupid. Izuku would open up his book and start writing down what he could practice on with his new powers, while also listening to the teacher. Said teacher Wood would usually call on him just to tease the teen, but it never worked since he knew the answer before it came out of his mouth. Teacher. Midoriya, thank you for volunteering. What is the? Izuku. Amaterasu. Teacher. W. -U. Izuku looked up with a smile and said. Izuku. You were going to ask me who the grandfather of Emperor Jimu was, and the answer is Amaterasu. Teacher. Well what about? Izuku. Jimon period. That's when the Dengu figurines date back from. Student 3. I didn't even know that. Teacher. I didn't even say it yet. Izuku. But we learned this already. Teacher. Oh yeah alright smart ass what about? Izuku. 538 AD that's when Buddhism was introduced. Teacher. How about? Izuku. The Fujiwara clan dominated Japanese politics. Teacher. Alright then, I bet you don't know what period. Izuku. The Heian period. Teacher. GRR that's it I'm giving you detention. Izuku. Okay. He then put his head back into his notebook and started back writing as everyone then looked at him like he was crazy. The more that Izuku worked, the easier the weights and his workout got for him. He still couldn't access his strength, but his excitement and dedication brought him closer to how to use it. A few months has passed by, leaving Izuku at least five months left until the exam to get into UA, and in that time he's really bulked up which shocked everyone. He started coming to school with people looking at him, wondering why he decided to put on some muscle, but left it alone right after. He caught the eyes of some girls, but he avoided them as much as possible, knowing that they wanted to prank him and wetten it. He would still get bullied by Kakin if the blonde ever caught him off guard, but every single day he learned that there will come a day that the blonde will stop being an asshole hopefully. Nowadays, it was more verbal than physical, but it didn't stop him. He was ahead in school, more so than before, his speed helped him get away from Kakin and his goons whenever they wanted to bully him. He's even cleaned the beach and bought him a heavy punching bag that he had a little trouble bringing in. With his super speed combined with his intellect and ability to process things faster, he was a fast learner when he started watching real martial arts fights, his mom even gave him some CDs on some of the fights his real mom had. His favorite was when his mom fought the other woman with red hair that made him blush, since her bodysuit was skin tight. The only weird part to him was that she called herself Black Widow when she doesn't even have any spider powers. After making it out of class, he texted his mom saying. Izuku. Hey mom, that trick with using my super speed to read all the textbooks in school worked. Inko. I told you it would so why are you so late getting out. Izuku. Well he gave me detention for answering all of the questions. Inko. Again the nerve of him dollar Izuku are you sure you don't want to take this to the higher ups? Izuku. It's fine mom. I'm going straight back to Dagoba Beach so I'll be in a little late. Inko. Okay, be careful out there. With that, he hung up his phone and paid attention to where he was walking, but then he was sucker punched in the face by Kakin. Kakin. And just what the hell's got you all cheery Deku. You finally gone senile or something. Izuku could feel his anger coming back, his eyes flickered gold, but he breathed out to calm himself down. He stood back up and turned to the blonde. Kakin looked him up and down and was irritated that he didn't bleed like usual as he said. Izuku. I'm just happy. Is that a problem? Boon. He since when did Quirkless here get some balls? Hakin. I don't know, but he'll learn his place again. Tatsuki then took the blonde greenette by the school jacket and slammed him against the nearby wall saying. Hakin. Whatever got you so happy, knock it the buck off. You're still Quirkless, a weakling and nobody believes in you. Izuku. Fine by me. I don't need anyone to believe in me. Izuku frowned at them, saying. Izuku. I believe in myself. Hakin smiled liking this little fire in the bug. He gets to knock him down all over again, since bullying the helpless version of him was getting boring. He looked at his goon and motioned for them to leave which they did as he said. Hakin. You know, I heard from All Might, the number one hero himself, that anybody without a quirk can't become a hero. Izuku. Hakin. Wanna know what that means, Deku. Izuku. You're gonna tell me anyway. Itsuki. You have failed at life. From this day till you die, you will know that one of us became a hero and not both of us. People like you are mistakes, so get that cheery look off your face because you can't be a hero. To make it even better. 
He then brought up his fist as a brilliant light shined from it as he said. Hacken. All Might was so impressed by me that he gave me his quirk. Something you could have used but I guess you weren't in the right place at the right time, huh? Izuku. Hacken. Hehe <laughs> I'm telling you for your own good, just die, it'll be easier on the rest of us, man. Trust me. But that he walked away chuckling to himself. Izuku was silent, but he wasn't angry or sad, he was still happy. Hakan didn't know that Izuku had powers which made things all the more great now he can be really surprised when he become a hero right under his nose. It was now 8 o'clock and Izuku just finished his combat and workout regiment, he was going to start his stellar light and photon practice, but he stopped, realizing what time it was. Deer knew his mom was worried sick, so he started to rush home only to hear what sounded like a bank alarm on his left down the street. Izuku. A bank alarm. He decided to check it out seeing that there were at least eight people in the building, being held as hostage, as the robbers started taking thousands of yen. His heart started to beat really fast, this was his first time being up close to a crime scene. Banker. Please don't kill us. Robber leader. Oh we're not gonna kill ya we're gonna murder ya after we're done. Izuku. Banker 2. That's the same thing. Robber leader. No, it's not. Robber ally. Uh, actually boss, it is. The robber leader then looked at his partner as his purple eyes glowed which made the goon paralyzed. Robber ally. Wait boss don't. The leader then shot his own goon in the face, which made Izuku's heart drop not only a robbery, but a murder as well. He peeked around the corner before looking at the rest trying to think of a plan on how to get them out of there. Robber leader. Now tell me, is it the same thing? The banker and allied robbers nodded their heads out of fear as they then started to rally up the money yet again. Izuku on the other hand had to get rid of the fear and replace it with pain, as he started to bleed from biting his own hand, he took a bunch of deep breaths thinking. Izuku. No I am not a coward I can do this. He's going to kill them all before the police or a hero gets here, so it's now or never. Izuku put his hood over his head and a medical mask on his face to at least conceal his identity as his body started to vibrate fast. Everything started to move in slow motion which meant it was time for him to act. He ran up to two of the bankers and with all of his strength, pulled them out of the bank and undoing the rope that held them hostage. Banker. What the? Izuku. SHH. Banker 2. Thank you. Izuku nodded but then. Robber leader. The hell where did they go? He pointed his gun at the rest and said. RL. Where are they? Manager. W we don't know. RL. Well you better figure it out in the next zero seconds. He then fired off his bullets at the hostages, but Izuku got them all out with the manager getting a graze. Manager. Damn it that hurts thanks, young man. Izuku nodded before going back and taking the bag of money away from the RL. RL. What the a kid. The goons then started to surround the teen as their leader pointed his gun at him, having no problem shooting a kid. One goon came in and Izuku dodged him and seeing an opening to punch him. Izuku. I can do this, right there, his ribs are unguarded. He then hit the goon, but it didn't seem to do any damage as he backfisted the kid away, Izuku flinched in pain, but noticed that it really didn't hurt all that much like he thought it would. He then got back up and tried again. Another goon came and sent a jab at him, but the green blondie sidestepped it and took him by the arm and used his momentum against him, throwing the crony over his shoulder. The teen looked behind him only to receive a hard punch to the cheek that sent him to the floor, despite the guy's size that hurt a lot more than it should. Goon. How like my quirk. It's called heavy hands, my fists become heavier on every successful hit. Izuku. RRRGH this wouldn't be a problem if I had my strength power, but maybe his would. He then focused his light energy into his fists and arms that released brilliant yellow light, making the Avildoers shield their eyes. When they looked back at the teen, they saw that his sleeves were ripped off and his arms were covered in white and gold energy. They looked at their boss who pointed his gun at them as they then came rushing the wanted hero. The guy that punched Izuku came in trying to bring his arms down on the boy, but he came into his guard and put his hand on his stomach, blasting him with the full force of stellar energy. The goon was sent flying with so much force that he slammed into the getaway truck, tipping it over. The boss looked at the boy with a glare seeing him take on his goons. Izuku. It's working I just need to keep calm and I'll be able to make it. That's when the goon with the heavy hands quirk came in throwing a right hook, but Izuku ducked under and punched him in the jaw, sending him flying, but unlike the others. He came back for more. Izuku blocked his right and left hook, thinking. His body vibrated as his thoughts went at supersonic speeds. Izuku. Okay, think, he said that his hands get heavier with every successful hit, which means that it has to be really bad on his shoulders and back. Which means that if I can meet his punches, he should go down, right? 
the green blondie's fist started to shine with his power, as the goon came back and throwing a jab, Izuku wished for the best and came back with the same force, meeting the goon's attack which made him smile. Goon. So, you wanna slug it out, kid. Fine by me. The two then started to meet blow for blow, as Izuku realized that the pain was starting to go away faster and faster, but he didn't know why. After a while, the goon started to move even slower, and his movements were strained as the teen thought. Izuku? Yes, it worked. Goon. Damn it I thought it'd be over by then. The teen then backed up and came in with a hard punch to the face that knocked the goon out, but then the leader called out to him. RL. Hey, kid. Izuku looked his way but as soon as he did, he was frozen, paralyzed and didn't know why. The leader walked up to Izuku cocking his gun back before pointing it straight at Izuku's head. Leader. You got stuff kid. But this ain't a fairy tale. You lost. The leader smiled wickedly as he then began to pull the trigger. Izuku. No I can't die here. Izuku then looked down waiting for his imminent demise, but realized that when he did. He was free from control. He then used his speed to get out of the way as the leader then glared at him. Izuku. I get it now, you'd have to make eye contact for his quirk to work. Taking that into account, he then dashed at the man, not making eye contact, and he prepared to fight him. Leader. Hey my eyes are up here. He fired off shots at Izuku, but the boy kept on dodging out of the way before cracking him across the face, but the man came back with his own left swing. He forcefully made the boy look him in the eyes paralyzed Izuku again. Just when he was about to shoot him again. The green blonde then channeled his light towards his chest and blasted him away, which gave Izuku back control. The Evildoer came back reloading his gun, but then the teen blasted light in his face, which made him blind for a while, but that was all the boy needed as he thought. Izuku. Great he's defenseless. Okay, just like that Black Widow lady did, always go for the ribs first, they won't be able to function. Just like he thought, he gave him a rib punch that put the leader off his game. Izuku. In the video, mom always went for a hard blow to the jaw. Feeling the attack he gave a left hook to the jaw before. Izuku. And finally, a palm strike to the chin. Giving the man an uppercut to the chin, he fell hard to the ground, unconscious as Izu grabbed his knees and breathed out. That was his first ever hero fight, and he was completely exhausted but excited as well. He saw the police pulling up with All Might and some other heroes in tow so, he dragged the Evildoers out of the bank, but that made the police point their guns at him. Police. Freeze don't move. The teen put his hands up quick not wanting to get shot until the manager came out and said. Manager. Please don't shoot, he saved us from these robbers, he's done nothing wrong. The police looked between each other and nodded before just deciding to cuff the Evildoers, if this kid took out all of them, then he has a quirk, which also means that he's not their problem. All Might, Deetherms, and Kamui Woods walked up to the boy who waved waved at the manager who thanked him saying. Deetherms. Hey kid, what are you doing out here so late? Ain't it past your bedtime? Izuku looked at them all, but when his eyes landed on the symbol of peace, he gave him a very distasteful look, though he didn't see it. Izuku. I was on my way home, but then I heard the bank alarm go off, so, I got curious. Pamui. That could have ended your life you know, don't just rush into things by yourself. Ethers. Yay, if you took these guys out, your quirk has to be awesome. So let us handle petty thugs like them while you train to handle the big fish. The eyes who gave the both of them a smile at least they weren't the type to focus on fame and wetnet. All Might. Young man. Izuku. All Might. You may have stopped them, and yes we are going to let you off with a warning for using your quirk without a license, but this could have been way more dangerous if they had quirks don't you think? Izuku. They did have quirks two of them did and I was just fine. All Might. Hmm, I see. Izuku. All Might. Would you mind taking off the hood? Izuku. I'd like to keep it on, thanks. Pamui. Come on, he is the number one hero. Don't you want him to thank you properly? Izuku. He's their number one hero not mine. I don't have one anymore. The three looked between each other before Deetherm said. Deetherms. Hey kid, you alright? You don't think it's Kinderu towards All Might? Izuku. Why would he care? According to him, you're a nobody unless you have a quirk. All Might. Izuku then disappeared in a burst of speed that was so strong that it left a crater where he stood, all three plus the police and bankers were dumbfounded by the kid's power. But All Might was the most surprised, whoever this kid was, he was clearly almost faster than he was, and there's only been one other person that could beat him in speed. All Might. The young man sounded familiar, but he doesn't ring a bell at all, not only that, what he said was kind of hurtful. There's something I'm missing and I just can't put my finger on it. Still though that speed, it couldn't have been. Entrance exams. It's been five whole months and the exams start in no less than a week. 
Olmaid and the other heroes have been having a difficult time tracking down the vigilante that is Izuku, since every time he helps them out, he disappears in a burst of speed that is on its own level. Only All Might has been able to keep up with him for a short time, but he could never catch the boy. Izuku was really happy about his powers, but he could never figure out how to bring out his strength and flight. He's learned that he has gained the ability of enhanced senses, regenerative healing factor and super durability when he took a chance and jumped off of a high building to see if he could fly. He was really high up and it should have killed him, but instead he smacked into the ground, making a crack under him. It hurt like hell, but he was still alive and well. His mother would always give him more CDs on her fight with some other people, but one fight in particular caught his attention. It was his mom's fight with some huge angry green man. He would always say his name before anything, and he terrified Izuku, hoping that this man was nowhere in his world. All Might on the other hand was having a hard time trying to figure out who the boy was, every time he's seen him he's usually wearing something to keep his identity away from him. Andy any time he's tried talking to the young man, he gets the cold shoulder. Anyone would be happy to see him, but not this boy. It seemed like he had a hard grudge against him by how he never stuck around, and his powers were so similar to his old friend that he hoped that she didn't keep this from him and miss the chance to teach his god-nephew anything. There had to be something he'd done to anger the boy, but not one thing came to mind. He thought about it more and more but still nothing. Until he remembered the skinny boy with green hair and blonde streaks, asking about him being a hero despite being quirkless, the mysterious teen couldn't possibly be him, and if he was, then Captain Marvel hid him away to get a laugh out of it. All might. Damn bastard. At the moment, the symbol of peace was training Kitsuki on the new quirk bestowed onto him, but it didn't seem like he needed much training, he's already figured out that he needs to spread one for all throughout his entire body, though it still hurt him. Hakan. Damn it what the buck. All might. Patience young Bakugo, the one for all quirk isn't something you can just learn in a few months, it takes years. Hakan. I get that already, but why does this shit still hurt? All might. You expected my quirk to be easily tameable. Ha 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 wrong. Hakan. Whatever. All Might. Hey. Hakan. All Might. Question for ya. Is there anyone at your school that isn't as fortunate as everyone else? Hakan sent a glare towards his hero and asked. Hakan. Why? All Might. It's important. So, is there? Hakan furrowed his brow and put his hand on his hip saying. Hakan. Yay, this weak bug named Izuku Midoriya. The guy pisses me off. All Might. Why is that? Hakan. He's a weakling, what other reason do I need? I kicked his ass a few months back for his happy-go-lucky attitude, but I've been letting him live since you're training me. All Might. Hakan. You shouldn't worry about bugs like that anyway. All Might. Young Bakugo. Hakan. Huh. All Might. People without quirks aren't weaklings, we are no better than them. Just because we have quirks don't make them trash. Hakan. Ooh oh I get it. Hey you save them for the money and fame. All Might. No I save them because it's the right thing to do, just like you should. Hakan then gave him another scowl and decided to get right back into training. After training, he walked the boy home and decided to take a walk. Betting all types of cheers from everyone around him. He waved and bid them a good day, but wondered exactly where this Izuku lived, he couldn't have been the boy he talked to, could he? All he knew was that Kakan had a personal grudge against him, which meant that he at least had to live close, right? He came around the corner and saw a teen in the same hoodie as the boy from before, cautiously looking around. The symbol of peace hit himself quick as Izuku quickly made his way inside, only to be chewed out by his mother. Inko. Again Izuku. Izuku. Sorry mom, someone stole a baby. What else was I supposed to do? Inko. You can't keep doing this. One of these day, the pros will find you. Izuku. I'm being really careful, it's been five whole months. All Might heard this and was almost certain that this boy, Izuku, was the vigilante, and if the dates match up, he is also the son of his old partner. That next day, Izuku was writing in his notebook with a smile on his face, as his teacher was now getting sick of his nonchalant attitude towards his teasing. Since the boy's got more of a muscular build people have been trying to talk to him more, but that wasn't okay with the educational instructor, it was teasing Izuku that made him cool to the kids, and now he was old news. Knock knock knock. Everyone then heard a knock on the door, but before the teacher could ask who was it, they all heard. All Might. Excuse me, is it okay for me to come in? Hakan. I know that voice. Student 5. It can't be. Student 2. He wouldn't come here. They then all saw All Might in regular clothes, slide the door open before stepping in as everyone then cheered and awed at the hero of peace being there. Hakan was surprised that his teacher was paying him a visit, while Izuku rolled his eyes and shook his head. Paying more attention to his notebook and going over what sort of applications his quirk could have. Hakan. 
All Might. All Might. Good day young Bakugo, how are you? Boon. Dude you and All Might are tight. Student. I never knew that. Hakan. Shut it, you bunch of extras what are you doing here? All Might. Ha 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 sorry to burst your bubble, kid. But I didn't come here for you. Hakan. Huh. The hero then crossed his arms and said. All Might. I came here for a boy named Izuku Midoriya. I wish to speak with him privately about something. Hakan and everyone else. Deku. Everyone then looked towards the boy who ignored everything that was going on, though it was hard to mainly because of the eyes that were on him. All Might then went over to him and said. All Might. Hello there young man, you mind if we speak outside, it won't take long. Izuku stared at the number one hero before giving him a smile saying. Izuku. Eh sorry, I would really like to, but I've really got to catch up on my schoolwork. Everyone. Did he just reject him? Hakan was baffled that Deku would even say that, considering that they both idolized the man. All Might then said. All Might. Come now, just five minutes of your time and I'll be on my way. Izuku took a deep breath and closed his notebook before gathering his things, class was almost over anyway. As the door closed, everyone went crazy, wondering why All Might would want anything to do with quirkless Izuku, while Kakan glared at the door, something wasn't right to him. Izuku. What did you want with me? All Might. Nothing too bad I assure you. Just a friendly conversation. He then threw his backpack over his shoulder and said. Izuku. Fine, talk. All Might. I'll cut right to the chase you're the vigilante everyone's talking about, aren't you? Izuku. Izuku mentally facipumed himself for that, of course that's what he's here for, the teen smiled and said. Izuku. What? PFFT, no, me, the vigilante I couldn't be. I gave up wanting to be a hero. All Might. Izuku. Can't be one without a quirk remember? So All Might was right, he knew this kid seemed familiar, this was the young man from almost 10 months ago. He certainly bulked up since then. Deciding to change the subject he asked. All Might. I see is the woman of the house around. Izuku turned away from him and said. Izuku. My mom's at home. All Might. I meant the real one. Izuku. All Might knew that Carol was staying with someone, he just didn't know who, and since she's dead now. This boy would think that whoever has been raising him, made him believe that she was the mother. Izuku. She died when I was born, why? All Might decided not to answer his question and asked. All Might. Hmm, on October 12th. The green blonde kept the back of his head facing the hero asking. Izuku. That's not my birthday. All Might. I know, but for months, a certain someone a sister in arms if you will, ups and disappears on me, and after July 15th, she shows up again. I'm asking because she died a week or two after your birthday. She kept on telling me about how much she wanted children before she kicked the bucket, but I never knew if she had any or not. Never got to ask her. Izuku. And what exactly does this have to do with me? All Might. All Might had a strong feeling that this boy was the one, but besides the build, he wasn't showing any signs of that. All Might. So, are you going to attend the exams this Friday? Izuku. No quirk, remember. Guess your memory isn't all that good. The hero then got in front of him and gave him a piece of paper, it was a recommendation letter for Izuku, which made him surprised as he looked at the hero who put a hand on his shoulder. All Might. Try anyway, maybe you can be the first to do it. Izuku. The bell then rung and Izuku watched as All Might left in a hurry, he looked at the letter to see that it was fully legit and put it in his pocket before walking off. On his way to the beach, he thought about the offer, should he really do it? He had no problems outrunning the pros after doing hero work, though it would only be a matter of time before they actually catch him. He sighed and crossed the streets only for his senses to go off and dodge to the left, seeing Kakin with a killer scowl. Kakin. And just what the buck did All Might want with you, you quirkless bastard. Izuku. Izuku really didn't want to deal with this, so he tried walking around the blonde, but he pushed him back. Hakan. Answer me. Izuku. Why do you care? Hakan. Izuku. Since when do you do care what is your problem with Mikitsuki? Hakan. Izuku. Not only did I find out that I'm quirkless but you bullied me every day, and for no reason. I was sad not having anyone to talk to and you were my only friend, now that I'm happy it bothers you what is your deal? Hakan started to shake in anger from how the damn nerd talked back to him, as his hands were then balled into fists. Izuku. So what if All Might came to see me you cannot be the center of attention all the time. Hakan. Izuku. Sigh, whatever if All Might gave you his quirk, then I guess he sees something in you. Life's going good for me, so stop trying to ruin it. He then walked around him, but Kakan took him by the back of the shirt, pulling him back. As soon as he prepared himself to attack the green-haired blonde, All Might came out of nowhere and pulled them apart. All Might. That's enough young Bakugo, a word. 
All Might then walked off to the side while Kitsuki glared at the other teen who didn't back down and glared back. After Bakugo walked towards his teacher, All Might sent him a thumbs up, but Izuku just rolled his eyes and kept on his way back home. He didn't feel like dealing with either of them, but he knew that he would have to. It was now Friday, and Izuku walked towards the exam area along with all the other youths there. Izuku. This is it. I really don't know what I'm going to do after this exam. But either way, I will be a hero. He smiled to himself before getting harshly bumped into by Kakin who glared, he paid no attention to the blonde though, he had better things to worry about. Wow, that was pretty rude. Izuku wondered who that came from till he realized that he and Kakin were one of the tallest ones there, so when he looked down, he saw this brown-haired, short, beautiful girl with a blush. Why would he do something like that, we're all trying to become heroes, right? He couldn't answer her, she was so cute that his own face went red as his heartbeat sped up. The girl reached up and put a hand on his head saying. You're all red in the face, you're not sick, right? We have to do our best today. So try to get it together, k? Okay? Izuku. Why yay? Well I really gotta hurry, hope we can talk more later. But that she ran off. Izuku. A nice cute girl talked to me. I can die happy. They all then ended up in the auditorium where present Mick started to explain how the exams will be going, until a boy with glasses just as tall as Izuku and Kitsuki stood up talking about a mistake that he will not stand for. He then looked at Izuku who just looked at him blankly and started to say. And you there, what's? Izuku. My face looks like this because you didn't let him finish. He was just about to explain what you thought was a mistake. The boy then looked at present Mick who had a smile confirming what the boy said and bowed asking for an apology. In the waiting hall, Izuku took deep breaths preparing himself for the exam, he was ready he knew he was. He was starting to stay focused, but then the girl from before entered his mind. His face went red again before his had to redo the whole focus part all over again, until he saw her in the distance. Izuku. Oh no there she is, but huh. Sigh. Because of his new flash precognition ability that happens at random, he knew that one person in particular was heading his way, so he turned around and said. Izuku. I'm not going to distract her. W how did you? Izuku. Heh, it's kinda written all over your face. HMPH, well I guess I should apologize about earlier. Izuku. It's cool, you don't need to. Denya. Tenya Iida. Izuku. Izuku Midoriya. Denya. It's nice to meet you. Izuku. Likewise. Good luck. Denya. Same to you. He's way more well-mannered than that blonde from earlier. Present Mick. Alright contestants, I hope you are ready, because here we go. Nothing everyone waited on a countdown or something until. Present Mick. What are you waiting for go there aren't any ready, set, goes in the real world, go. They all then made their way out in a rush, only to be met with robot who they assume were their goals. They all started to go to battle with Izuku and Kitsuki, getting the most attention out of the entirety of the student body. Kitsuki slammed his fist into a robot before sidestepping one and blowing its head right off. An even bigger one came and out of nowhere, he brings out a. Kitsuki. Texas smash. He punched the robot head on releasing a dangerous amount of power, everyone was blown back from how strong it was, and the judges watched him with interest. The kid's pretty good. Yay, he's amazing, I would've never thought that I'd see the day when someone has two quirk, and both are immensely useful. It's actually quite rare. Say what you will, he has the potential to be a great hero, but I can tell by that look on his face, that he either has a lot of ego and pride or god complex. All might. Haha <laughs> come now friends, I believe he'll grow out of that. HMPH. They then looked at the Izuku saying. Who is that boy? Hmm. They looked at Izuku standing there, surrounded by the robots. They all then dashed in towards him, but when they did. He stomped on the ground, shaking everything, taking everyone by surprise, as the robots that surrounded him and others, were propelled into the air along with the debris. He then poked the debris, making them into projectiles that shattered the robots whole, everyone, not understanding exactly what he did. Run back the footage. They took a brief moment to look at the footage that they got, seeing what he did. They were baffled by this as he then blasted a large group of the three peas. He switched around and saw some robots about to shoot missiles at him, so he used his super speed and came in fast before swiping his hand upward, which sent off a huge pillar of white and gold energy that made every wonder if he was really just a examinee or actual hero. Izuku disappeared from their eyes and ended up behind a girl, stopping a robot from striking her since she didn't pay no attention. Izuku. Look alive. Student. He then put his hands on the 2P and blasted it with the combined strength of his stellar light and photon energy, creating a beautiful heavenly colored blast. Student. Whoa. 
everyone around was entranced by the display of power as they watched as he made what looks like a spear out of light and started to skillfully twirl it around. He began to deal damage to every robot that was sent his way. That kid there is really cleaning house. No kidding. All might. Hey. <laughs> Two robots came his way so he ran up to one and jumped off of it, ready to stab his weapon into the other's head until he saw a guy too scared to move as a 2P towered over him. He then threw his lance at the 2P's head, instantly bringing it offline, while the boy looked at Aizu. The green-haired blonde blasted both the other two that came for him and looked at everyone who stared. Aizu. Come on guys, we're trying to be heroes. So let's all do our best. I know you can do it, you all have awesome quirks, use them. They realized that they were still in the challenge and took on a determined expression before nodding. They thanked Izuku for his motivational words, while the judges watched as he was surrounded again. Now that kid is something else. Present Mick. Hell yeah he is he's already in the top three. HMPH, yeah a little too good. You find him suspicious. The vigilante that we've been chasing has quirk similar to his. You think that's him? I know it is, look at how he zips around fighting off the robots and protecting the other kids. That's definitely him. All might. I know it is. The judges then looked at the symbol of peace. What do you mean, you know? All might. That boy's name is Izuku Midoriya, he was born quirkless, but because of who his real mother was, he's gained powers. You seem to know this boy personally, All might. If you knew this why don't you go down there and arrest him? Using your quirk without a license is strictly forbidden. All might. I know, I should have done something but I didn't. And for a darn good reason too. Why? All might. I believe that this boy is the son of Captain Marvel. They all looked at the hero like he was crazy, as All Might kept on watching him and Katsuki, who has just taken out his hundredth 2P. He can't be. Ace didn't have children. And even if she did, she would have told us. All Might. You all didn't know Kara like I did. She used to always get a kick out of people's surprised reactions, it was her pastime hobby. Plus, these powers the boy is using are much like hers. Super speed, light of a star, photon blasts, enhanced senses. The only thing the kid isn't doing that Carol can do is fly or throw whole skyscrapers. Present Mick. Gotta take his side on this one, the kid did stop one of the students from talking like he knew exactly what he was gonna say, and that was always something that Ace did that was annoying. He, he couldn't have. One of the judges then got up and started to walk away saying. Well, if he really is Ace's kid then he wouldn't mind a little challenge. He gave Present Mick a look as he slammed his fist down on a big red button. Izuku, Kitsuki, and everyone else could feel the ground shake violently before a gigantic and terrifying robot came out of nowhere. Everyone shook in fear and began to run the other way, while Kakin smiled at this challenge. He started to generate white lightning through his body as he then jumped from one building to another, getting higher and higher yelling out. Kitsuki. Detroit, smash. Before he slammed his fist into the side of the robot. The giant staggered back, bumping into the buildings before setting its eye on Kitsuki who grinned saying. Kitsuki. Come and get it hitch. The robot slammed his hand down to the ground, but the blonde quickly moved back and sped up to his face again. He slammed his fist into him making it tumble over, but not exactly putting it down for good. Hakan growled out with a smile and decided to test something real quick, so, he threw out both arms, letting one for all spark from his arms before jumping back up and yelling out. Kitsuki. Explode. To his and everyone's surprise, his two quirks that mixed in with each other became so strong that it shook the entire area as a huge mushroom-like explosion went off. It destroyed every window, building, even the streets. The monstrous robot's lower half fell down to the streets as Katsuki kneels with his shoulders, arms, and hands broken, though he sucked up the pain since All Might was watching him. Katsuki. Buck that hurt. With Izuku, he sent a glare at the robot giant, but his main concern were all the people who were all in the same vicinity as this thing, they didn't move. Izuku. They're scared. I have to get them out of here. He then got into a tracker's stance, seeing that the robot was starting to targeting the fearful bunch, he sped off at Mach 2. The judges stood up in surprise, he was way faster than before. Where'd he go? I can't see him. All might. He's hitting Mach 2. Mach 2. All might. Carol could always travel at least 20x faster than sound almost hitting light speed, but it took a lot out of her. The boy isn't trying to fight this thing right now, he's trying to save all those other competitors. The judges then tried to watch in awe of Izuku getting each and every one of the examinees out of harm's way, while also dodging the robot himself. He would try to blast it with his photon or stellar energy, but it did little damage. The robot swatted its fist at a nearby teen on the building scared for his life, but Izuku grabbed him and jumped as high as his basic strength led him over the appendage. 
He landed on the fiend and ran up his arms, jumping off its shoulder to also grab a girl that was on the building behind it. Everyone was flabbergasted that this one teen was fending for himself while also getting scared teens out of the way of harm. Izuku dropped down to the ground and put the last of the kids he rescued on the safe side of the city, with everyone else but then. Somebody help. That voice sounded real familiar as Izuku slowly looked back to see the robot about to intentionally crush the girl who made his heart skip a beat. He saw her brace for impact and decided to take it up a notch and hit Mach 3, instantly getting to her. He prepared himself for the pain he was about to endure, since he knew he still didn't figure out how to bring out his super strength. All Might looked at the judges and said. All Might. Can't you stop this, he's going to get killed. We can't the button is stuck. All Might then started to make him way out there but then. Ooh um. He came back to the window and stopped breathing for a moment to see if Izuku and the girl was alive. They all did, some even gulped for him, but then they saw the robot's foot started to be pushed up. All Might. Examinees. No way. Denya. Such power. The girl who braced herself for death blinked open her eyes to see that she was still alive for some reason, but didn't know why until she heard. Izuku. Hey I never got your name. She looked up and instantly recognized the boy from earlier, the one who was tall and didn't really say anything to her. Holding up the gigantic foot of the robot who did its best to crush them. Izuku looked down at the girl with a smile, happy that he knew why he couldn't bring out his strength. Izuku. I I I'm Izuku Midoriya you're not hurt, are you? She continued to stare as the blush on her face became red, she didn't even know that she was in his arms, but she soon found out as he stood up. Izuku. Ra. Izuku pushed the metal monster off of them, making it fall as he quickly put the girl over to the side with everyone else. He glared at the robot that started to get back up saying to himself. Izuku. I now know why I couldn't lift that truck or why it was such a struggle for me to get rid of that trash. With every step he took, there was a shockwave of pure strength that blew in all directions as he balled his fist saying. Izuku. It's because I was believing in my mom when I should be believing in me. I thought I could do it because of her, but I should have been thinking I could do it because of me and no one else. The robot brought his fist down on Izuku, but he didn't look worried. Look out. Denya. Move. The teen then brought his hand up and instantly the attack was stopped. All Might. I knew it. It's really him. So Ace did end up having a kid. All Might. Carol, you bastard. Izuku then ripped the arm off before jumping up almost 100 feet in the air, where the robot's face was, and with all his strength. He gave him a hard punch that had so much force that the robot's head and everything behind its body went flying with a loud boom that was heard throughout the city. Izuku smiled at this until he realized something the head was still going and the direction it was headed was the city. Izuku. Oh crap. As soon as his feet touched the ground. He dashed out hitting Mach 4 just to be safe as he then heard people screaming about some huge object coming from the sky. The teen quickly got in front of it, letting the head crash into him as he skidded back from the mass, ripping up the streets. There was a little girl with an ice cream in her hand who walked with her mommy, but then they both saw something huge and a boy skidding their way, but it was too late to move they both became scared, but Izuku stopped right on time looking at them both. Izuku. Ha ha ha. You ate test PT. 1. That next week went fine, the damage from the exams were repaired, and no one was hurt thanks to Izuku. He's had a couple of people come by and thank him, even offered to take him out to eat, but he respectfully told them no. After telling his mom about his strength finally being put to use, it became harder for him to do things. Mainly because he would end up breaking them, though his mother just giggled at it, saying that Carol had the same problem. After breakfast, Izuku made his way to the beach to train yet again getting there with no problem but then. Izuku. Someone's following me, but they don't seem like a bad person. He just decided to shrug it off for now, this person wasn't malicious or anything it was just plain creepy. The girl that Izuku saved was walking with another girl with green hair and a frog-like appearance talking while they strolled near the beach. So did you ever find this Izuku boy, Achako? The girl now named Achako shook her head feeling a little bad, the green-haired blonde risked his life for her, and she didn't even get to tell him thank you. Achako. No and I'm really upset about that. He risked his life to save a girl like me, and I couldn't even thank him. Sue. Well, what happened after the exams? You didn't let him get away, did you? Achako. Sio, I didn't. Sue was confused. Sue. So, how come you didn't get the chance to thank him? Achako. Sue. You ran away, didn't you? Achako. I ran away like a dummy. Achako whined at this, but then got happy again, looking at her best friend. Achako. But you should have seen him, Sue. He was awesome. Fast, strong, and his quirk was so cool. He had white light in one hand and gold light in the other did I mention he's strong? 
The girl now called Sue Sweat dropped at her best friend and flatly said. Sue. Yeah you did. Achako. But you don't get it, he was crazy strong that giant robot that attacked us and almost crushed me, he knocked its head all the way off. Sue. How can he have four quirks? That's not healthy. Achako. I don't know, but it was so awesome and sigh I didn't even. Suddenly someone bumped into her when she wasn't looking so she looked at the teen and said. Achako. Oh oh. Izuku Achako. Sorry. Izuku stopped looking up from his notebook, seeing that he bumped into someone who happened to be the girl he save. Achako's eyes went wide as she pointed at him, making the son of Captain Marvel flinch as she said. Achako. You. Izuku. A uh, hi. Achako. I've been looking for you. Sue walked up to her friend's side and asked. Sue. Is this him? Achako. Yay the crazy strong guy I was telling you about. Izuku. You a uh, high blush. Izuku knew she was cute, but her adorable childlike personality was a little too much for him, none of the girls at his school was like this. Izuku. Why you've been looking for me? Achako. Yes. Sue. Don't mind her, she's a little bit over the top. I'm Tsayu Asui, but call me Tsu. Izuku, and nice to meet you Tsu. Achako then took his hand which made Izuku turn to the color of a tomato. Achako. I wanted to thank you for saving me back then. Seriously, if it wasn't for you I'm pretty sure I would have been roadkill. Izuku. I I I it was no problem, really, ww we are trying to be heroes, it's natural. Achako. Well thanks anyway. Oh that's right you gave me your name, and I didn't give you mines. I'm Achako Uraka, Izuku right. Izuku. Yay, that's me. Achako then closed one eye and put her hands together saying. Achako. Are you doing anything right now? The three of us can go get lunch. Izuku. W well, I was just heading to the beach. Sue. The beach. How come? Izuku. Oh oh, it's to train. I usually go there to do that. Achako. You train there? They both looked at Togoba Beach and never realized just how clean it was, the city stopped handling the maintenance there, so how? Izuku. I cleaned it. They then threw their heads at him which made Izuku flinch. Izuku. Sorry I I didn't mean T well it's just that it was written all over your faces. Sue. You cleaned it. But it was really junky. Achako. Yay, where did you even put it? Izuku. W well half I gave to the city garbage dump and is for the other half. He then brought out his hand as it glowed with shining white light that made both girls stare at the beautiful power. Izuku. I destroyed it with my power. Achako. That's so awesome. Sue. That's really cool, but it suddenly got hot for some reason. Achako. Yay, I feel it too, where did that come from? Sue. Is it me or is it getting hotter? They started to look around wondering where this heat wave came from, but Izuku just looked at his hand, was that him? He then put his hand away and turned his light off which made the girls look at each other saying. Achako. It's gone now. Sue. That's weird. Izuku. Yay. Sue. So Izu, you sure you can't come with us? Achako. Uo, you already thought of a nickname for him. The teen blushed at that since only his mom calls him that name. Sue. Yep. Izuku. Actually, that's the nickname my mom gave me so. Achako. Then it's settled for now on, we'll call you Aizu, plus it's really cute. Izuku. Blush why yay thanks also I can't, sorry. Sue. Well that's okay, I guess we'll see you later, I hope we all get into UA. Izuku. Yay same I'm sure you guys made it in. Achako. Nah not me I got the least bit of points. Izuku. Huh. But. He looked really concerned, asking. Izuku. But how come? Achako. Well, heh, I wasn't exactly fast at destroying the robots like you and everyone else, so I was a few points away from getting in. Aizu. Achako. But, let's hope for the best am I right? Aizu. Why yay, hope for the best. But that they both left waving at him as he waved back. He then frowned a little bit, he hoped she got in, though he mentally face-palmed himself, knowing that half the reason he wanted her there was because of how cute she was. Once his training was done for the day, he made his way back home, around 3 o'clock to be exact, and came in only for his mom to come in running to the door. Inko. Izuku 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 Izuku. Izuku. What happened what's wrong mom? She then put an envelope in his face and said. Inko. A letter from UA. Izuku looked at the letter with suspicion for two main reasons, for one, All Might himself gave him a recommendation letter. He really didn't need to do the exam, and the reason he did was because he didn't want help from him. The second reason is because he had a feeling that whatever was in this envelope or disc since he just opened it, had nothing to do with UA per se. 
He then nodded at his mom, giving her a smile before heading upstairs to his room, he closed the door and put the disc down, as it then turned on to show All Might wearing a yellow suit. All Might. Hello there, young Izuku Midoriya. Izuku. All Might. I hope you're excited because I have some news for you despite not accepting my recommendation papers, you have been accepted to UA. The judges have seen you fight and how you save people like a real hero and can't wait to get you here for your training. Welcome to your hero academia. He was at least happy he got in, but he knew there was something else, so he paid close attention to what was said next. All might. Now that we got that out of the way, there's something else I would like to request of you. From how you used your powers, the judges also know that you are the vigilante from a few months ago. Don't worry, they can vouch for your safety and whatnot, but there's something else we would like to talk to you about personally me. Izuku sighed because he knew that from All Might's last visit to his school, it had to be about his mom. All Might. Meet us at UA. In an hour please. He looked back at the hologram with surprise, did he hear that right? Did All Might just say please? Izuku. It's not like the teen hated him, he just really didn't like him anymore. Having your idol tell you can't do something hurts a lot, and he hasn't really been able to let that go. He's the symbol of peace, which means he should live up to that, he should motivate people to chase whatever dream they have. After half an hour, he walked downstairs and said. Izuku. Mom. Inko. Hmm. Oh Izuku what happened did you get in? Izuku. Hey yeah I did. Inko. Yes oh I'm so proud of you. Izuku. Thanks, but. Inko. Hmm. Izuku. Mom. Did you ever meet All Might? You know, when mom was alive. Inko. No, your mother was sort of a private woman, so she kept her personal life to herself, why? He then told his mom about what happened upstairs and at school, plus how he feels which made her frown in sadness. Inko. I see you're still dealing with that hurt feeling. Izuku. Yeah I guess so. Inko understood her son's dilemma, if she had Hiro tell her that she couldn't be what she want, she would be upset too but. Inko. I think you should go. Izuku. Inko. Even if it angers you or hurts you that much, you should go, All Might's the greatest hero alive, but if he's anything like Carol, he's a little slow at catching on. Go and tell him what's on your mind, after that, he'll get it. Izuku. Sigh you're right. Inko. Heh, now you go on and hurry back, I'm making your favorite later. Izuku smiled and said. Izuku. Yeah sure. With that, he was gone towards the school, arriving at the entrance with Sekijiro Kansas, a.k. of Lad King waiting for him with his arms crossed. Izuku walked up to the hero who noticed him saying. Izuku, you're Vlad King, it's an honor to meet you sir. Vlad. And you must be Izuku Midoriya, and thanks, pleasure's all mine. Didn't know that Ace had a kid. Izuku. Ace. As they made their way to the conference room, Vlad said. Vlad. Yay, there were a few times that us guys would get ahead of ourselves and challenge her, which she declined until we attacked her anyway, that pissed her off, and I'm pretty sure you can guess what happened next. Izuku. You did it on purpose. Vlad. It was worth it. They then came to the conference room to see the heroes Midnight, Snipe, Thirteen, Cementos, and All Might with some kind of dog. Hello there, my boy. I am Nezu, the principal of UA, it's nice to meet you. Izuku. Likewise sir, thank you for accepting me into your school. Nezu. Oh no, thank you for participating, unlike you, your mother wasn't all that cooperative. Izuku didn't know what he meant by that, but just decided to sit down, hoping the principal could shed some light on what he just said. The hero in Midnight then leaned down in front of the teen, which made him flinch since she was so close, he did her best to keep his eyes off of her. Pause even though she was dressed in formal clothing. He knew exactly who this was. Midnight. Hmm hey yep, you're definitely Carol's kid. You got rebellion all over your face. Izuku. Wah. 13. Come on, don't say that, Midnight. He just got here, don't write him off already. Aizu. Uh, mmm. Cementos. I believe that we should keep this brief. Cementos. As you know, we have already figured out that you were the vigilante a long time ago, thanks to All Might here. Izuku gave the hero a side glance before the teacher continued. Cementos. But we are not just here for that, the reason we called this meeting with you was because we wanted you to confirm all of our speculations. Are you the son of Captain Marvel? The teen really wanted to lie about this, but he knew that they wouldn't believe him, not only that, but from the way they looked. It seemed like his mom did something or got herself caught up in something. He sighed and nodded as All Might said. All Might. I knew you were. Those power are so much like your hers. Izuku gave him a soft glare and said. Izuku. Well they're mine now. Nezu and everyone else could clearly saw that there was some tension between All Might and the boy, but decided to let them work that out. Snipe. Good, then we can tell you the info we have. 
Izuku. Nezu. You see, your mother was the for lack of a better word the absolute game over for villains all over, though she never wanted to work with us heroes. We would always insist, but she would always tell us to stand down and let her handle it, she was kind of an enforcer in a way, but still a great person. If it wasn't All Might, it was just her. Izuku. There isn't any footage on All Might working with my mom. 13. That's because we confiscated it all and deleted all traces of her. Cementos. By your mother being so strong, villains went to track her down, but could never find her. So they would cause destruction wherever they went. Midnight. That's how All Might became the number one hero. Izuku looked at him, not believing this as he said. Izuku. You took the credit. All Might. To get the hostility off of your mother. Make no mistake I'm strong in, but instead of waiting for them to attack like we did, she tracked them down. Nezu. No one can ever find out about who your mother is. If they do, they will do whatever it takes to put you down. Midnight. Keep in mind that you can still be a hero, but until you have a better grasp of you powers and out on your own, lay a little low for now. Izuku thought about what they said, it was the most rational idea right now, everyone he knew could be in trouble, he then nodded as they all smiled and said. Nezu. Good, I'm glad we had this talk. Is there anything you'd like to ask? Izuku thought about it before he remembered what Achako said earlier today. Achako. Nah not me I got the least bit of points. But let's hope. He then looked at the principal who smiled at him and asked. Izuku. The girl from the exam, the one I pushed that giant robot off of, from what she tells me, she didn't get a lot of points, so I was wondering if I could share mine with hers, surely I have enough, right? They all looked at each other before the principal himself who closed his eyes and thought about what the teen said. She was actually only one point away from being accepted, and they were going to cut the girl a break, since they needed an even number of students, but seeing as how the boy was selfless, made the principal smile even more. Nezu. Of course, you have more than enough points, it's actually frowned upon to share your points, but we're going to make an exception. Izuku, thank you Mr. Principal. Nezu. You're quite welcome, you may go now, and best of luck to you Monday. He smiled at the principal and said. Izuku. Thank you for having me. All Might then stood up and said. All Might. Young Midoriya, let me walk you home, I have some stories about Ace you wouldn't believe. Izuku. No thanks. All Might. Hmm. Hehe <laughs> what? I can assure you that you'd. He cut him off, harshly saying. Aizu. I said no. All Might. But that he left out. The staff all looked at the symbol of peace, wondering exactly what he did to piss the kid off, but before they could ask, he left out, instantly ending up in front of the teen. All Might. Young Midoriya. Izuku sighed and looked up at the humongous man. Izuku. Yes. All Might. Help me understand, why is it that you have such a strong irritation towards me? Izuku. You know, never mind. He tried to walk around the man, but All Might stepped in his way again saying. All Might. Please, I'm asking, I'm the person you looked up to right. I want to make it. Izuku. What? You want to make it right? It's too late for that. All Might. What do you mean? Izuku. Was my mom right about you? Do you really not catch on? All Might. Izuku. Think back to the rooftop, what you said to me, you didn't think that would hurt. All Might. Me telling you that you couldn't be a hero without a quirk. That's your frustration. Izuku. Hey you say it as if it's so small. All Might. Well. Izuku. Have you ever looked up to anyone, All Might? All Might. Why yes, two of my master and Carol. Izuku. If they told you that you couldn't be a hero when it was your lifelong dream, wouldn't you be hurt too? All Might really didn't see it that way, he was really looking after the boy's safety not his dreams. Though he didn't think it would be that much of an issue, the giant man kneeled down and put a hand on Izuku's shoulders saying. All Might. I, I didn't know, honestly, but you have powers now, that's something, right? Izuku ripped away from him saying. Izuku. No it's not you're supposed to be the symbol of peace, you motivate other people even kids but not quirkless people, now that I have powers, you want to interact with me, you don't think that's kind of quirkist. All Might. Izuku. That sucked, hearing my idol tell me that I couldn't be a hero, hearing that I was bullied for it my whole life story, and you still thought I couldn't tend to make it worse. He glared at the huge blonde man. Izu. After knowing that I was quirkless, after knowing that I had a full grasp on the value of strength, you willingly chose to give your quirk to my personal bully. All Might. Izu. Someone who didn't even deserve that power. All Might's eyes went wide as he looked at Izuku. He was froze, looking at the hurt expression on the boy's face before grasping his arms and asking. All Might. Izuku, who told you that? Izuku. The same person you stopped from punching me a while back, but even before that, I heard you tell him that you'll give him your quirk. All Might. I. Izuku. 
You don't make good judgment, do you? All might. Izuku. Haha. <laughs> the almost saw some tears fall down Izuku's eyes. He couldn't imagine what it felt like to be one of the oddballs in society. People do treat the quirkless poorly. But he didn't think too much into that. Izuku. Did you know, up until the day you saved me, there was an old video I used to watch of you, saving a hundred people. Not to worry anyone, help has arrived because I am here you said I used to love that video. But now, I don't know where that guy went. I used to be real jealous that you gave Katsuki your quirk, but not anymore. I'm happy. All might. Izuku. Maybe he'll change and we can be friends again. But that Izuku left out with All Might yelling out. All Might. Young Midoriya. But the boy ignored his hero. All Might made a mental note to lecture Katsuki of the importance of no one finding out about his secret, but started trying to figure out exactly what he can do to make it up to Izuku. Monday morning. Inko. Did you brush your teeth? Izuku. Yay, mom. Inko. Comb your hair. Izuku. Hehe <laughs> I don't do that. Inko. Alright did you put on clean underwear? Izuku. He yes mom. Inko. Well, what about? Izuku. Mom I'll be fine, promise. Inko. Sigh, I tell you time and time again that it's not okay to just cut people off like that. Izuku. Sorry. He then left out the door telling his mom bye. Izuku was really excited for today, despite what happened with All Might a few days ago, he was really pumped to show everyone what he can do. It did make him a little discouraged to know that his mom was on a lot of villains' blacklist and that that transfers over to him, but he knew that everything will be fine. He quickly made it to UA walking to his class which was Wana, but he took his time knowing exactly who was in there. He really had to do something about Katsuki because he was getting sick of this back and forth going on between them. Quickly coming up on his homeroom, he opened the humongous door to see everyone watching as he ate it, and said X bully went back and forth until the blonde noticed his hated rival. He glared at the boy as everyone then looked at Izuku. Iida. It's you. Iida then went up to his new friend and shook his hand which Izuku awkwardly chuckled at. Iida. You were exemplary out in the entrance exams. I've never seen someone with more than one quirk before. Izuku. W well, I wouldn't exactly call it a quirk. One other boy heard this and stared at the green-haired blonde while Katsuki pushed Iida out of the way and got in the teen's face. Katsuki. Pretty stupid move, ratting me out to all might and shit. Izuku. I told on you and then stuck up for you. He came in closer and said. Katsuki. I don't. Bucking. Care. What you did. What the hell are you doing here, Deku? Izuku. I'm here for the same reason you are. To be a hero. Katsuki. A hero. How many times do I have to tell your quirkless ass that someone like you can't be a hero? Iida. Doesn't have a quirk. He most certainly has a quirk, a few actually. It's amazing that he has four. Mashrao. Four quirks. Momo. That shouldn't be possible. Ajiro. Whoa, I bet that guy's like, super strong. Enki. No doubt about that. They both must be you see how shredded those guys are. Shoto. Katsuki. Four quirks. As if, if he had a quirk, I would have known about it. Iida. But he. Izuku. No, he's right, Iida. I don't have a quirk what I used came from someone else. Katsuki. Oh. So somebody gave you their quirk. PFFT copycat. Izuku. I don't have a quirk, I have something else, but that's none of your business. Katsuki. Are you talking back to me? Izuku. Get out of my face, before I make you. Before long, both individuals began to glow, Katsuki's red eyes and Izu's blue eyes. They both glared at one another as everyone else felt the thick and hostile tension between them. They just got here and they're already ready to kill each other. Ichako. Izuku. The green blonde looked back to see Ichako who stared at him with a smile. He gave her a nervous one back and said. Izuku. H hey, you made it in. I I knew you would. She smiled even more as she looked so excited, she then hugged him tight, which made the teen turn beat red because her chest was pushed up against his stomach. Ichako. Thank you thank you thank you all might told me how you gave me some of your points, and I gotta say, that was really sweet of you. Izuku. And then then no, it's okay, D don't mention it. Really. Are you two done? They all looked back to see what seems to be a caterpillar and went quiet as it then said. Pause if you are, I suggest you get in your seats and sit the hell down. Everyone. What the hell is that? You ate test PT. 2. The man with long messy hair then got out of his caterpillar sleeping bag and gave the three a tired look and said. Shota. Get to your seat, sit down, and shut up. You're wasting everyone else's time. Though when he looked at Izuku, the teen could tell he had a little irritation towards him, but left it alone, he didn't want to piss off his new teacher. Shota. 
Welcome to UA my name is Shota Azawa and I'll be your homeroom teacher. Now that we got that out of the way. He then threw everyone a UA tracksuit saying. Shota. Put these on and meet me out on the training field and be quick about it, especially you. Azuku raised an eyebrow at his teacher who gave him a sideways glance. Shota. If you're fast enough to get a bunch of kids out of the way of a giant robot, you should be the first one with your tracksuit on. Azuku. Everyone looked at the green blonde as he sighed and made his way out to get dressed, he just knew that something was going to happen. Itsuki just glared at Azuku since the attention was on him for some odd reason. After everyone got dressed, they made their way out into the field with Mr. Azawa. He began to explain exactly what they would be doing. Everyone became excited about this until Azawa then made it into an elimination test where the person in last place would be expelled indefinitely. After that everyone started to push themselves as hard as they could, though they all noticed that their teacher kept his eyes on Izuku who noticed this as well, but decided to play dumb to it. He didn't look all that mad, just a little annoyed, but when it came to the last test which was the ball throw, everything changed. Itsuki wondered what beef the teacher had with Deku, but remembered that if the nerd irritated the teacher. He'll send him home, and the blonde wouldn't have to worry about him anymore. He's already come second or third place behind the green blonde, so him being expelled would do nothing but make him happy. Azawa. Izuku Midoriya, get up here. Izuku now had a feeling something was going to happen, as Achako took him by the sleeve of his suit and said. Achako. Good luck. He blinked at her before smiling and saying. Izuku. Yay. Azawa. Come on, we don't have all day. He walked towards the teacher who threw him a ball, but as he was about to catch it, he found Izawa in front of him winding up a punch with glowing red eyes. Everyone gasped in surprise as Izuku narrowly sidestepped the attack only for Izawa to use his scarf, which revealed the yellow goggles that was around his next. Izuku. It can't be your eraser head. Eraser head. Iida. I believe that was a hero. Before he could say anything else, he was then wrapped up by the scarf and pulling towards the teacher who twisted around and tried to slam his fist into Izuku's face, only for the team to block him and skid back. Achako. Gasp. Iida. Mr. Azawa. Izuku stared at the man, wondering why he did that, while everyone spoke their opinion. You can't do that. A bit harsh, don't you think? Yeah, that's not right. The boy in the back nodded at this, agreeing with his fellow classmates. Azawa. Quiet. All of you, or would you all like to get expelled? They all silenced themselves but Ichako said. Ichako. It doesn't matter, you're a teacher that's not right. Azawa looked at the girl as she continued. Ichako. You can't just do that. Izuku. No. They all then looked at Izuku who stood up and said. Izuku. It's okay. Itsuki smiled at that as Izuku started to pick himself up, it hurt, but the bruise started to heal, if anything he was just surprised that his teacher did that. Azawa. Of course it's okay, I know for a fact that didn't hurt, now did it? Izuku. No, it didn't. But why are you doing this? Azawa. Why? Azawa walked towards the teen with a glare, while his scarf started to defy gravity and said. Azawa. When I heard that Ace had a kid, I hoped and prayed he wouldn't go to this school or be in my class, you wanna know why? Because I didn't want some self-centered egotistical little brat, acting like he owns everything. Izuku. You knew my mom? Itsuki now frowned in confusion just like everyone else, what did he mean by that question? Izuku's mom was literally harmless. So why would the teacher attack him behind her? Azawa. Knew her. Heh, I've fought her. Izuku. Azawa. Instead of doing things the way they should be done here, she used her powers to fight crime without any regard for the rules or anyone's life that was in her way. Buildings toppled to the ground with people in them. When she fought villains, she didn't even have the audacity to even apologize if and when someone got hurt. When we went to arrest her interrogate her, she left without another word, even when we tried to restrain her. He then used his scarf to wrap Izuku's arms, he tried to pull him in, but couldn't, saying. Azawa. Your mother didn't obey the law, she acted like she was above it, as if she was the law. One thing you never knew about the woman that birthed you, is that she had a lot of pride, treated the evildoers and anyone that went against her, like children. She may have had respect from all heroes, but besides Endeavor and All Might, she had little respect for everyone. Izuku. Azawa. She was an unstoppable force. Nobody's quirk affected her and every hero every person hoped that she wouldn't turn against them. Always speaking of how we should do better and how these villains should be obliterated. In my opinion, your mom was a villain, because when she was pissed off, we had to save the villains from her. Izuku. Izuku understood it now, he honestly thought that this was out of jealousy, but it was mainly because his mom was too strong. Like if All Might went bad, there wouldn't be a lot of people that could take him down, let alone restrain him. But that didn't mean that he needed to suffer for the things that his mother did. Azawa. 
so whatever ego you have, stops here. I am your teacher, I have the power to teach you and I can choose not to. I can expel you, and there wouldn't be anything you could do about it. I'm not doing this because of the personal grudge, I'm doing this for the safety of the rest of my students. You will do what I say while you are here, and no matter what, you will not let your powers get to your head, do you understand? Izuku. They all looked at Izuku who didn't say a word. Achako stared at the teen hoping he was okay, while everyone else was confused, was his mom really that strong? No one's quirk affected her. That was crazy, Izuku then looked up at his teacher and said. Izuku. I understand why you'd feel the way you do. I mean, someone who could give all might a run for his money and they were evil. I get the concern. Azawa. Izuku. I'm not gonna attend here and act like I didn't know of the consequences to having power. You have every right to look out for everyone's safety the way you do. Unbeknownst to everyone, said Hiro was watching. Izuku. But you need to know. Izuku looked up as his ocean blue eyes faintly glowed while light, white and gold energy broke off the scarf and encased a boy in a pillar of beautiful heaven-like light. Itsuki. The book. Hayoka. Whoa. Mizo. Cool. So awesome. So flashy. As the pillar disappeared, they all then saw Izuku with his sleeves burned off, his left arm had gold on it up to the shoulder, while his right arm had white on it. He looked at his teacher. Izuku. What she did was wrong. Whatever the case may be, a lot of people's lives were at stake. So I completely get your cautiousness. But I shouldn't have to be punished for her. Azawa. Izuku. I am not my mom. So it's not right for you to throw what she did onto me. Because if it's gonna be like that. With a firm and cold stare, he said. Izuku. Then I should be allowed to do the same to those who have treated quirkless people with no respect of dignity. Azawa lowered his eyes at the teen. He then remembered that Carol's abilities weren't quirk-based, so, in a society where the quirkless were treated badly. He could only imagine what the teen could have went through. Azawa. Sigh. He made it clear that he has no intention of following the same path as his mother, but he only asked to be treated like everyone else. So the scruffy yellow caterpillar closed his eyes as his scarf wrapped itself back around his neck and said. Azawa. Fine. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt this time. Instantly, Izuku smiled brightly and said. Izuku. Yes sir. Azawa. This is what's going to happen, I'm going to try and erase your power with my quirk while you throw the ball, and the second time around you can use it without me interfering, I need to know if Marvel really left us with wasted potential or not. Izuku. Hey that's not right. Azawa. Shut up and do it. He then stepped back, activating his quirk on Izuku who felt a little weaker, he didn't notice it at first, but now that he paid attention, he did feel a little drained. The green blonde then took a stance and grasped the ball hard and threw it as hard as he could, which put him at the same distance as Katsuki, who stepped forward with an angry glare and said. Katsuki. What? Akito. That guy's awesome. Sai. He sure is. Azawa. Quiet. Alright, now go ahead, full strength. Izuku, you got sir. Azawa. Just admit it, you're trying to piss me off on purpose, aren't you? Izuku looked at the ball and stared at it, remembering his teacher's words, he wasn't mad about it, rather it motivated him to show Izawa and the other faculty that. He may be his mother's son, but he's not her. He then brung his eyes towards the sky and threw the ball as hard as he could, which kicked up a lot of dust and produced a shockwave of power, as the ground he stood on sunk in a little. Momo. So strong. Koji. He certainly is something else. Itsuki. What the hell is going on? Everyone except for Azawa had to shield their eyes from the dust and powerful winds, but when it all died down. Barry looked up at the ball that started to glow bright orange from the speed it had, and how it was still ascending. Barry all heard a screeching sound coming from it before looking at Izuku, but when they did, they went wide-eyed. There were cracks all under where he stood as he breathed out a little and looked at Mr. Azawa with a determined expression and bald fist saying. Izuku. Is that good enough, Mr. Azawa? Azawa. HMPH. He turned his back to him and said. Azawa. If you were anything like your mom, that ball should have been incinerated, but I also knew that you held back. Izuku. He, nothing gets past you, does it? Azawa. No, it doesn't. So, for now, I guess you earned your place here, good job. Izuku. Thank you for the compliment and thank you for being my teacher. Azawa. Yay, I don't need confirmation. You are doing this to irritate me, right? Izuku's smile became wide as he said. Azawa. Now get back in play so we can go over your scores. Izuku's danger sensors went off as he then gave a surprised expression to a 1 for all 20% punch in his face that not only kicked up a lot of dirt, but destroyed the field behind him. Everyone had to once again cover their eyes from the massive power output before everyone looked up to see Katsuki's fist in Aizu's face. 
Katsuki. GRR. He was then shot through a tree as everyone gasped at how Katsuki just wrongfully sucker punched him like that. He went for another punch, but he was stopped by Azawa's scarf, saying. Katsuki. I could give two shits about who your real mom is, and I don't fucking care if you got four quirks, but no matter what you are still beneath me. Making good on his warning to Katsuki, he grabbed the tree the boy put him through and smacked the shit out of him with it. Sending him through the gym building. The explosive blonde came out and growled, being shocked and mad that the work had the audacity to refuse him. He and Izuku got ready to throw down, here and now, but Azawa used his scarf to keep them both apart. But, of course, Azawa pulled Katsuki in, tripped him, and planted his face into the ground before he put his knee on his back. Azawa. And you, I saw how good you were during the entrance exams, you're pretty strong too, but I will not allow your ego to get the best of you. Whatever grudge you have against this kid, squash it or quit. I don't care which one you do. With that, he left towards his other students so he could give them their scores. Achako, Sayu, and Iida ran up to Izuku who cracked his neck. Achako. Are you okay? Izuku. Hmm. Oh yay, I'm fine. He then sent a glare to the corner of the gym building, knowing that All Might was there, but before the man could come out and say anything he and his new friends walked away. Iida. That was quite a show, your strength is monstrous. Sayu. It was cool. Izuku smiled at them before looking at Kitsuki who got up and gave him a hateful glance which made him return one back to him. Words weren't going to stop his ex-friend, which meant that fists were the next best idea. Later on, everyone found out that Izawa lied just to get them to do their best, which made them all suffer from the emotional stress they just put their souls through. After school was out, Izuku made his way out with Kitsuki harshly bumping into him and daring him to say something which the green blonde didn't, he glared and walked past him, giving him the same harsh bump as well. This made the full blonde surprised that he even did it. Achako, Iida, and Sayu passed Katsuki up and smiled at the teen saying. Iida. You were quite exceptional today. Achako. Yay. Sayu. What's Katsuki's problem with you? The blonde gave her a cartoon-like glare and said. Katsuki. Shut the hell up, Frogger. With that, he left. They ignored him and asked. Achako. So, what are you doing after this? Izuku. Actually, I was going to head back to Dagoba Beach and get started training. Achako. Again. Sai. Ribbit. Even after class. Iida. You shouldn't push yourself. Izuku. Heh, it's fine, I actually have a lot of energy. Achako. Well, you're going by the train station right. We'll walk with you. Izuku. Yay, sure blush. Iida. Your face is flustered, are you okay? Izuku. Yay, it's fine. Su. If you say so. Izuku then accidentally bumped into some hooded woman and looked at her, he couldn't necessarily see her face because of the hood, but he had to admit that despite the hoodie, she had a really nice shape. Izuku. Blush oh oh I I'm sorry ma'am. I don't mention it, kid. She then walked off with Izuku watching her, for some reason he felt like he should know her. Iida. Someone you know. Izuku. You are no. They all then left, continuing their talk, but as for the woman, she flipped open Izuku's wallet and got a look at his ID and address. Izuku Midoriya, huh? No doubt Carol didn't name him. Cute kid. Hours after walking them to the train station and leaving the beach, he came home, hoping his wallet would be there though he doubted it. When he came in, he saw his mother, stressed on the couch, but he just giggled to himself because he knew that whatever it was, wasn't big. Izuku. What's wrong, mom? Inko. Izuku we forgot. Izuku. Forgot what? His mother then looked at him with teary cartoon eyes and said. Inko. Your hero costume. The blonde greenette froze in shock at that, he honestly didn't think he would be making it this far, but he did, and he never put in conditions for his hero costume. He mentally facip him himself before rubbing his temples and saying. Izuku. Darn it how did I forgot about that of all things. Inko. What will we do, you can't just. Knock knock. They both turned towards the door, hearing someone knock on it, but this only made Izuku glare softly. He knew exactly who it was. Inko. Now who could that be? Izuku. Inko went and opened the door to reveal All Might there. All Might. Hello there again. Inko. All Might. All Might. Pardon the intrusion, but I couldn't help but overhear your dilemma of a costume probal. Izuku. You followed me. The number one hero flinched at that since the boy knew and said. All Might. Well I anyway, I may have something that could help you with that. It came straight from the next town over and I obviously can't fit it, so I. Izuku. You just came back from following me to go and get it. All Might. Well. Inko turned to her son and said. Inko. Izuku. 
The boy stayed quiet, not looking the blonde hero in the face which All Might understood, he did just get the lowdown on how his mom used to be when people weren't looking. And his protege did just use the quirk he gave him to hurt Izuku. He then pulled up some clothes and said. All Might. They aren't much, young Midoriya, but at least they're something. Izuku. All Might. And I actually had them made for you as an apology. Inko. The green-haired woman looked at the hero who smiled nostalgically at the clothes saying. All Might. Carol's super suit was awesome in my opinion, she never had to get them fixed or wear a different set of them. Hehe <laughs> she wasn't seen by many, but the ones that did see her, called her the shooting star hero, it was always like watching a comet in the sky. After finding out that you passed the entrance exam, I rushed to go get them. Inko looked between her son who still had his back to the, the giant man, feeling out of place on what to do. When would her son drop this attitude he has for him? Izuku's hand tightened around the handbar of the stairs and just tried to keep on walking. Inko then took the clothes and said. Inko. T thank you, I'll be sure that he wears them, tomorrow. All might. Thank you, now, I must be off I will be your teacher on the hero course tomorrow, so rest well. Izuku. With that, All Might closed the door. The blonde greenette finally breathed a sigh of relief before he found the clothes in his hands. He looked at his mother as she said. Inko. Izuku, maybe it's time that you forgave him. Izuku. Inko. I don't understand how it feels to have your idol tell you that you can't do something, but that was in the past. Heroes aren't perfect yes, but they don't hold grudges, that's more of a villain thing. His mom was right, villains do hold grudges and he wasn't that. He sighed and gave her a smile saying. Izuku. You're right. Thanks mom. Inko smiled at her son and nodded as he left to his room and got ready for the next day. That morning, he left towards the school, getting there bright and early with the hero clothes he decided to take in his backpack. He made it to the hallway of his class, but then he passed up the hooded woman from yesterday, who leaned against the window with her arms crossed and looked at her before looking straight. Izuku. Huh. He looked back at her, but when he did, she wasn't nowhere to be found. Izuku. Am I losing it? No. He looked in front of him and slightly down to see her right in front of him, which made him flinch a little until she pulled out his wallet. You dropped this yesterday. He looked at her before taking his wallet back, saying. Izuku. T thank you. The woman giggled at the boy's shyness before reaching up and patting him on the head, which made him blush a little. The woman that wasn't his mom is touching him again she then walked away, once she got far enough, she said to herself. Yep, definitely Ace's bundle of joy, but he's kind of like Banner when it comes to flirts. Heh, that's gonna be fun. After she disappeared, he walked through the doors, wondering who that woman was and how the heck she got in without the alarms going off. Achako came to his side with a smile saying. Achako. Hey. Izuku. Ah hey. Achako. How was training yesterday? Izuku. It was tough but I got through it. I can't believe she really wants to talk to me. Achako. So, were you scared because of what Mr. Azawa said? Cause I sure was. Izuku. It did get me a little nervous. Not to mention she is really beautiful. Izuku kept on thinking about how cute Achako was as she kept on talking, and before he knew it, he ran into the back wall of the classroom, making everyone laugh at him. Achako. Are you okay? Izuku. Eh uh yay, -huh, guess I wasn't paying attention to where I was going. Achako. Try to be more careful. He blushed and laughed nervously as they sat down, everyone noticed that Izawa wasn't there, which made them all question where he was until they all heard. All Might. I am here e. Bees oh whoa. Bajiro. All Might. Enki. Look guys he's in his Silver Age costume. Sento. That's so awesome. Shoto Izuku Kaken. They all marveled at the world's strongest hero, though he noticed that three out of everyone didn't say anything. One was just quiet while Kaken glared behind him at Izuku, but again, the boy ignored him. The blonde green at himself just didn't want to say anything. He then started to go over their special fight training, ending it with everyone getting dressed into their hero costumes as they made their way to the training city. Izuku was then last one to come out as All Might started to explain how their training would go until they heard Achako say. Achako. Whoa. Ida then looked back which made everyone do the same thing, as they saw the strong green blonde come out of the darkness of the tunnel. Izuku came out with the clothes that All Might gave him as everyone audited the tall teen. Mina so cool. Enki. Dude those clothes, aren't they like the really expensive ones from the town over. Izuku. Expensive. Izuku then looked at All Might who gave him a glance as the student with electric yellow hair kept on talking. Enki. Yay they're like crazy expensive they're made out of the same stuff that make actual hero suits, that's why it's so much money. Su. You must have saved up a whole lot to get it. Izuku. Why yay I must have gotten lucky. 
Pitsuki just glared because he knew Izuku didn't pay for them, and his mom certainly doesn't have that kind of money. Which meant that it came from their idol which pissed him off even more. Why was the number one hero so interested in a bug like him? He balled his fist at the weakling as Izuku stared at the large man before he started to explain their team matchups and who they would going against. All Might pulled the balls from the box PFFT and realized that Izuku and Ichako would be going against Katsuki and Iida. This took the blonde green at by surprise as he then sighed and looked at Katsuki who had an angry but happy expression on his face. It was already obvious to everyone that there was a story behind the two of them and that they didn't like each other whatsoever, but to be put against each other was kind of dangerous. All Might looked at the balls and said. All Might. Young Midoriya, I I could always pull again and. Izuku. No I don't want to get any special treatment from you or any other teacher. I'm not a special case if I have to fight Katsuki. He then looked at the boy with a glare of his own that made his eyes glow a little as he continued. Izuku. Then I don't care, all I know is that I'm winning this. Katsuki. That's some real big talk you putting out there, weakling, but whatever, if you really think you can take me, then we'll just have to see. All might. Very well, villains head on into your building, in 5 minutes, the heroes will enter, as for everyone else, to the video room. Doing what he said, everyone left towards the requested room while giving a sideways glance to the two. Itsuki harshly bumped into Izuku yet again with an expression that told him that he is in for the fight of his life, but then All Might put a hand on his fellow blonde's shoulder, which made him look up at his teacher. All Might. You know, young Midoriya believes that even you could change, and so do I. Itsuki looked down, but then looked back at Izuku, his scowl hardened even more as he then ripped away from All Might and said. Itsuki. As if. All Might. Itsuki. If that's your way of telling me not to give him all I got, then you're in for a rude awakening Deku wants my respect, he's going to have to take it. Izuku. The blonde then made his way inside, giving Izuku one last look which he returned before Ichako said. Ichako. Wow, you two are intense. So, it's a faded battle between rivals. Izuku. W what me and Katsuki know. After five minutes, the heroes made their way in quietly, Izuku listened for any kind of sound but didn't hear any, and the ones he did hear sounded too faint to identify. Meaning that Iida was on the top floor. He closed his eyes and focused on his senses, knowing for a fact that Katsuki wasn't going to follow whatever plan Iida set up and stopped walking. He put his hand in front of Ichako, which made her stop walking as they then heard footsteps coming towards them. Izuku glared while Ichako gulped, she also had a feeling that it was Katsuki, but hoped that it wasn't. The blonde then showed himself, coming around the corner with an expression that spoke volumes of how impatient he was to make the green blonde eat the dirt. Izuku slowly put his hand down and stood up straight with an intense expression as well, Achako saw it, and it made her stomach turn. Izuku. Achako. Achako. Ah why yay. Izuku. Go and take on Iida, he's on the top floor, he and the bomb are on the far end to the left, but don't let him see you, okay? Achako. Why yay, sure, but the only way there is through Bakugo. Izuku. Trust me he won't come after you. She stared at the teen before looking at Bakugo who didn't even bother acknowledging her presence, as she then cautiously and hesitantly made her way towards the blonde. When she came close, she slowly went around him, he didn't even try to stop her. He was too fixated on Izuku. It's like his main goal was to fight Izuku. Everyone saw this from the screen room. Momo seriously, what are those guys deal? Mashrao. Yay, he could have used that time to take her out. Mineta. The guy's got some major hate against that Izuku guy. Su. I think it's cause Katsuki just hates Izuku. Mina. Seriously. But he's cool and cute why? Siro. Don't know, I just hope that they don't try to kill each other. All Might. Back to the battle, Achako finally made it around Bakugo and ran towards where Iida was while the blonde growled. His body lit up with white-yellow lightning, making the entire place shake under him, while Izuku's went ablaze with blinding white light that also had yellow particles in them. Katsuki. I'm gonna hurt you, Deku. Izuku. Try it if you want, I'm not scared of you. In an instant, both walls behind the teenagers exploded outwardly as they both dashed at each other with so much power and force that when they collided the entire building shook including the screen room. Mineta. Whoa. Ajiro. That's Obatis. Enki. Man, those guys just couldn't wait, could they? Shoto. The two were seen at a stalemate in strength, baring their teeth with death glares. They pushed each other off, only to charge back in and exchange blows at one another, while the ground under them shook. Itsuki. You son of a hitch. Akin got his left hand free and gave Izuku a hard Detroit smash in the face, making the boy stagger back before he pulled him back in just to headbutted him. 
Izuku growled and ripped away from Katsuki and threw a right hook at him, but the blonde dodged out of the way before slamming a hand on his stomach and setting off an explosion. It ended up sending Aizu back, but the boy caught his balance and dashed back towards the blonde, doing Mach 2, and ended up with his hand in his face. Aizu fired off a hot beam of photon energy into Katsuki's face, which made him fly back out of building before he picked himself up. He wasn't ready for the speed that Aizu had as the teen tackled him into another building before uppercutting him into the ceiling, making him fall, back first, onto the roof. The blonde became furious, he didn't think that Izuku could hit him that hard, which meant that he couldn't pull his punches, this worm needed to know his place. He needed to know who sits on top of the world. Izuku jumped to the roof but was hit with the 30% strength of a Texas smash that sent him through a building. Katsuki. I am better. Instantaneously, Katsuki turned into lightning itself and speed towards where Izuku was and started jumping off the buildings, he jumped over him and gave him another Texas smash in the chest, making the teen smack into the pavement with an explosion. Izuku's eyes opened as he finally snapped. Izuku. GRRR, Raya. A huge blinding light enveloped the area, destroying buildings and throwing Katsuki back. He glared at where Izuku was only to find that he wasn't there. He looked up and found the boy bringing his fists down on his head, making him crash into the pavement that shattered like glass on impact. The blonde quickly got up seeing Izuku speed around him in a fast blur, before his danger sensors kicked in, and he twisted around only to block a powerful light-based punch that could have broken his arm. He gave him another strike to the head as Katsuki tried to attack him with an explosive strike, but he weaved the teen. The two went at it back and forth before Aizu gave him a strike to the chest, cracking his chest plate and sending him flying. Katsuki got right back on his feet as he and Izuku dashed at each other with blinding speed, it was clear that Katsuki was faster for now, but Izuku hit harder, and since his senses were more heightened. The blonde found himself coming to a stop because of the pain, but the green blonde didn't let up. He sped back and forth through Katsuki punching him in the face, then the chest, and then the stomach, before the blonde got sick of the abuse and got back into the game. The Ida and Achako watched the two fight, they knew that two of the tallest ones had beef, but they didn't think it would be this bad. Using his superior strength, Aizu forcefully put Katsuki on the defensive, making him fly back, he came in for a hard left swing which the blonde duck under. He got ready to explode his arm off, but then the most surprising thing happened. Aizu moves out of the way with lightning fast reaction time and took the offending arm and threw the blonde over his shoulder. Katsuki slammed into the floor with a loud crack of the ground and was about to get right back up again, but then Izuku quickly took him by the front of his suit and punched him hard in the jaw before throwing him against a nearby building. He blasted him with the full force of stellar light from his chest. Katsuki's skin started to steam as he gritted his teeth, his light power wasn't normal, it burned like hell. The redhead in the screen room looked at All Might and said. Ajiro. Sir they're going to kill each other. All Might. He couldn't help but watch. Katsuki going at Aizu. Aizu going at Katsuki. All Might knew he could do something, but he wanted to give the two this time. Izuku has every right to snuff out Katsuki's flame of pride, and Katsuki wanted Aizu to prove that he's deserving of his respect. The number one hero knew that these two could be the best team if they just got over this huge stepping stone. The two dashed at each other meeting blow for blow as they then both came in for one more final attack, Katsuki throwing in a 100% Texas smash, while Izuku's fist lit up with stellar light. As soon as their fists connected, a huge explosion that drew the attention of the principal, staff, and even as sleeping as Awa happened, everyone in the city saw the gigantic pillar of light laced with white-yellow static and wondered exactly what was going on. Everyone in the screen room plus Iida and Achako made it down to their location as the smoke cleared to see that they both were still standing but badly injured. Itsuki's arm was completely broken and Izuku had some very bad bruises everywhere. All of a sudden, the blonde fell to his knees. He glared at Aizu one last time. Seeing his wounds heal quickly before hitting the floor saying. Itsuki. Damn Deku. The green blonde breathed heavily halfway conscious, he made his way over to Katsuki taking him by the shirt and getting ready to punch him again, but he couldn't. He tried but his muscles ached from his first time, exerting so much energy. He then fell to one knee with Achako yelling. Achako. Aizu. All Might ran over to them both and put two fingers up to Katsuki's necks, feeling his veins pump which meant that they were okay. He sighed relieved before standing up and saying. All Might. Not to worry, these two are fine, just knocked out. Koji. Seriously after all that. Mashrao. These guys are monsters. All Might. All of you go and wait in the screening room, I'm taking these two to the nurse, once I'm done I'll come back and behave yourselves. They all nodded as he picked them up and left. The USJ. 
both Izuku and Katsuki have been going through some tests by Recovery Girl to make sure they were okay and that nothing too major or life-threatening happened to them. Both teens had their arms crossed sitting right next to one another and avoiding their gazes to one another as the adorable elderly woman glared at All Might, who put his hands up in a surrendering manner. RG. It's a good thing you got them to me when you did, any second longer and your predecessor would have been crippled. All Might rubbed the back of his head in and said. All Might. T thank you recovery girl. RG. Sigh, I understand why you did what you did, but you should have included trying to make things right with Carol's son, it's quite obvious that the boy doesn't like you. Izuku. Itsuki. Why did you call this weakling's mom Carol? Her name is Inko. RG. I see so you've just been keeping everything to yourself, haven't even told him who the boy's real mother was, right? All Might. W well. RG. And lose that form if you can trust Izuku Midoriya's mother, then you can trust him. Izuku. All Might. Sigh. All Might sighed as his skin started to produce steam as he started to shrink. Izuku saw All Might's true form and went wide-eyed, he looked like he was dying. The man then coughed up blood and said. Yagi. Sorry, I've been meaning to show you this form, but you never stuck around long enough for me to. My real name is Yagi Tashinori, it's nice to properly meet you, Izuku Midoriya. Izuku just stared at the man in front of him before silently looking off to the side. Katsuki grabbed him by the shirt saying. Katsuki. Why all of today has been weird, why is everyone talking about your mom? Izuku yanked his hand off of him. Izuku. Hands off. They both stood and growled at one another, but then RG said. RG. Because the one you think is Izuku's mother, isn't. Itsuki looked at the woman like she was crazy before Yagi said. Yagi. If I'm just patching it together, Izuku Midoriya's real mother is a powerful half-human heroine from another dimension. Born with the power to absorb all types of energy, heal her own self and many other things. He looked down and said. Yagi. We've even had a few private spars that ended up with her really being the victor. Itsuki's eyes went wide as he took a step forward only to almost fall. Itsuki. What that's not bucking true. You're the number one hero you're stronger. RG. Until Carol came around. Yagi. It's true, I am strong, but our power gap was way too large. In my prime and at full strength, I could probably take out an entire city with my most powerful smash attack, but Carol. Itsuki's looked at All Might who had a sad expression on his face as he continued. Yagi. As she was in a league all on her own, she had the strength of a star, which meant that scientifically, she was 10 billion times stronger than me. She just held back. Itsuki. Izuku. But that means. Itsuki looked at Izuku as RG said. RG. The boy accidentally held back when fighting you. Yagi. That energy he blasted you with was unbearably hot, right? That's because it's stellar energy, light from a star that can heat up to almost that of the sun maybe even higher, and you took it head on. Putting a hand on his shoulder, her said. Yagi. You're one tough kid. Before looking at Izuku. Yagi. Sigh, I'm sorry about what I said to you young man. I didn't think it would bring so much harm to you. I really only did it to protect you, but in the process, I crushed your dreams. Yagi then bowed and said. Yagi. I hope you can forgive me. Izuku had nothing to stay, he felt that the anger was gone, but he spent all those months looking out for himself and Inko, that what Yagi told him was a little late. He then got up and started walking out saying. Izuku. Thank you recovery girl, I'll be on my way now. Itsuki. Oi Deku I ain't finished with yo. RG. Oh hush up Sunny. Itsuki looked at the short woman as she said. RG. You were way worse off than him because unlike you, he has an unmatchable healing factor, I only kept him here so that All Might could finally say what he's been putting off to the boy. Just give me a few more minutes, once your nap is over, you can go on to your last class with him. Itsuki. Yagi. Sigh. But Izuku, he walked to class being in his own mind for a bit, mainly because of what Yagi told him and because of his classmates. The no point one hero carried that with him all this time which was frustrating, but he did show him his true self, so that was a plus. He hoped his classmates wouldn't start asking him so many questions, because he doesn't even know if it's safe to tell them. He ran his hands through his hair and looked out the window he passed up before coming up on his class. He groaned though, thinking of his teacher and how he would have something smart to say about what happened. Even when he gave his cool and bad a statement about not punishing him for the mistake of his mother. He really didn't want to be wrong. He took in a bit of oxygen before closing his eyes and walking in the door only for people to look his way. He opened his eyes to see that everyone was staring at him. Ajiro. Hey, it's Starlight Boy. Izuku. Hey. Siro. You're right it is him man you were awesome out there, taking on Kitsuki like that. Izuku. Uh, I. 
Iida, Midoriya, Izuku, hum. He saw the speedy upstanding student rush into him which made him flinch. Why did he look so serious? He then took him by the shoulders and asked. Iida. Are you sure it's okay for you to be walking? Izuku. Why yay, recovery girl, said that by the time I got to her, most of my worst injuries were already healed. Enki. Already. Akito. Dude, that's incredible. Mina. You were so cool out there and that pretty light was so bright that I thought I may go blind. Achako. Izuku. He looked over to see that Achako came over and asked him. Achako. Hey, it was pretty rough out there, are you okay? Izuku. Why yeah really. Achako. Alright, if you say so. You were pretty great though. Izuku blushed and rubbed his head saying. Izuku. Oh oh t thanks really. His words drew on as he saw Azawa going through a magazine. The blonde greenette stared before sighing, deciding to get it over with as everyone then looked at Azawa, since he did as the teen walked up to his teacher. Azawa. What do you want, son of Carol? The teen's eyes lowered at that, as he bowed and said. Izuku. Aren't you gonna chastise me? Azawa gave him a sideways glance. Izuku. I mean, I know you heard what happened. You don't want to jeer at me and say that you were right. Azawa and Izuku stared at one another before the man sighed and said. Azawa. Relax kid, I ain't gonna bite your head off. Izuku. A. Eh? Azawa. I got the lowdown from recovery girl right after you left. All Might's Dumbass put you both together by random choice, so one way or another it was bound to happen. Though to hear that you accidentally held back your strength on Katsuki was a little bit interesting. Everyone. He held back. Azawa then lightly hit him on the head with the magazine and said. Azawa. So, after hearing that, I thought that maybe there's hope for you yet. So keep it up, yeah. Izuku stared at the man before giving way to a suspicious expression. Izuku. You just complimented me. Azawa. Hmm. Izuku. Yay, you did. And you don't compliment anybody. Izuku. You sure you're the real Azawa sensei? Cause he's usually just a spoil sport. Azawa. It is too damn early for you to be trying to piss me off already. After just coming back from your other class. Sit down, shut up, or I'll make you regret it. Izuku giggled and said. Izuku. Right, yes sir. Iida. You've gotten praise from Mr. Azawa. Mina. It's official you're the coolest person in class to me. I'm Mina Shido, nice to meet you. Ijiro. Ijiro Kirishima. Denki. Denki Kaminari so are you blonde or green at? I can't tell. Izuku. Little bit of both. Mineta. Hey there. He then looked down. Izuku. Hm. Hi. Mineta. I'm Mineta, wanna watch hentai together? Izuku. All the girls gave him a glare which made him say. Mineta. I have no regrets. Before everyone else gave him their names along with question on what other types of quirks did he have, but Izawa told them all to shut up. Izuku then felt a pair of eyes on him and looked to his far right to see the only boy that didn't give him his name. His hair was just as unique as his eyes and he had an intense, stoic stare on his face pointed toward Izuku who stared back. He wondered what his problem was until Ijiro leaned towards the teen whispering. Ijiro. Weird. Izuku. Who is he? Ijiro. Shoto Todoroki. He doesn't say much though. Izuku. Todoroki. So, he's the son of Endeavor. Ijiro. That's what I heard, but I can't figure out why he's staring at you. Izuku. Ichako leaves forward since she was behind Izuku and whispered. But Izuku's never had a girl whisper in his ear like that before. He felt a bit of a rush from it. Ichako. That is pretty strange, you didn't do anything to him, did you? Izuku. No but Ichako. Ichako. Hm. Izuku. Blush could you not breath on the back of my neck. The girl's face became flushed as she yelled out. Ichako. W wait I'm sorry it wasn't my intention. Izuku. And no, it's okay. That's when Katsuki came in with an arm cast on and bandages around his other arm and head. He gritted his teeth, but when he saw Izuku, his glare softened a little. Izuku. Katsuki. The rest of the class. Again with the stares. Yagi told him everything, about why Izuku wouldn't have a quirk, and how Inko wasn't Izuku's real mom, and that his mom died after he was born. Katsuki. TCH. He then silently went to his seat in front of Deku and sat down before deciding to do some studying for the rest of the day. People complimented him as well, but he just ignored them all. Once school was over, he made his way out of the school, seeing Izuku walk with four eyes, pink cheeks, and Frogger before turning his head from them. He didn't feel like going home, so he went for a walk through the city. He couldn't believe that Deku actually had powers he couldn't believe that the worm's mom was actually stronger than All Might and that she wasn't even fully human. 
He gritted his teeth at this because he now knew that he had to start taking his training more seriously, he can only do all of All Might's moves at percent 20, and he can't do it for long without bruising or breaking something. If Deku's mom was that much stronger than All Might, then he needed to be stronger than Deku. He looked out at the setting sun, but then heard what sounded like a struggle coming from nearby. His scowl hardened as he decided to check it out only to see a woman and her daughter being towered over by some headed man and a beast. The thing was huge and terrifying, he heard the headed man giggle before saying. It's time to give the Nomu a test run before the game show. Mom. Please stop don't come any closer. Daughter. Mommy, I'm scared. Mom. It's okay honey, I'm here. Itsuki put his back against the wall with silent fear as he looked down at his free hand. Itsuki. What the hell why am I shaking? It was the killer intent that got him shook. This man and that thing were clearly going to kill both of them. He balled his fist and thought. Itsuki. Stop bucking shaking. Mother. No ah. He looked back and saw the thing grab the woman and put her head in his mouth which horrified him as the man said. Nomu, bite. Before the thing now called a Nomu could even do this. Katsuki boomed towards them at the speed of sound and gave the thing a thunderous blow yelling out. Katsuki. Detroit, smash. The beast went flying through the wall and skidded across the ground near the street where everyone saw it and ran. It stood up like Katsuki's attack was nothing which made him go wide-eyed. One punch from All Might always lays someone out, so why wasn't this guy down? The hooded man saw the boy and gave him a look which almost made the blonde freeze, but he stood strong as the woman and daughter ran off thanking him. Nomu, kill him. The beast slowly looked at Kitsuki who got ready before booming off towards the teen. Using his explosions, he catapulted off the ground right when the Nomu was driving his fist into the building they were near. Kitsuki's feet then touched said wall, so he then used one for all to give himself a boost and dived down hard towards the beast, spinning in the air before giving it a. Kitsuki. Manchester smash. The heel of his foot slammed hard into its brains, making a groan in confusion as to what the boy was doing. Itsuki growled seeing that nothing was working, so his body started to glow with one for all's power. Itsuki. Reaya. His attack now produced a shockwave as the Nomu forced his head up, throwing Katsuki back. He quickly got back up, but when he did, he found the hooded man's hand about to grasp his face. He didn't know what his quirk had to do with his hands, but if it's anything like the blondes, then it has to be lethal. He narrowly moved out of the way and threw his hand out at the bastard's chest. Setting off an explosion which sent the stranger flying towards the top of the alley, but the Nomu went and caught his master. Damn kid. The blonde used this time to set off another explosion in the air, so that anyone any hero could see it before going back to his adversaries. Taking in the situation, he assumed this thing didn't have a mind of its own, which meant that the smaller guy was pulling the strings. So if he take out him, this thing won't fight him anymore. Nomu put his master down and got ready for Katsuki before booming off towards him, but then the boy disappeared in a burst of speed. The stranger was so shocked that the kid figured out how to win so fast that he couldn't really react fast enough. Itsuki was about to light the bastard up with the most powerful and non-lethal explosion he had, but the Nomu sped towards his master, taking the blast for him which shook the entire area. Itsuki. Damn it. Ahahahaha. <laughs> the beast grabbed the blonde by the head as he said. Crush him, Nomu. Itsuki felt the pressure around his head start to tighten, he was scared, he blasted an explosion in the thing's face as much as he could, but nothing worked. He started to bang down on his gigantic fist, but still nothing. In those moments. He thought about his mom, old man, the kids at school, that annoying ass Azawa, and even All Might. He began losing hope. Whistle. Itsuki. He heard the whistling and wondered where it came from before looking to his left. He noticed that everything stopped for some odd. Like it was all on pause. He looked at the very tall-headed man who was squatting upside down in the air. Kitsuki. Wow, another good Kitsuki. That's nice to see, really. Kitsuki. Don't worry. It's not your time yet, but use this as reminder. He got closer. Fear doesn't always make you weak, it can make you stronger if you harness it. With that, the hooded man disappeared and everything started back up. Kitsuki didn't know what he meant by that, but he knew that he didn't want to die, now here. Kitsuki. M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M Ha? Ha you think you can? Kitsuki. Greya. The hooded man began to see the blonde fight back the strength and pressure around his head, which made his growl. He began to tell the Nomu to stop playing around and just kill him, but then, the three heard. All might. Texas smash. The burst of true power and wind hit both the Nomu and the stranger, blowing them at least a mile away. Itsuki fell to his knees coughing and hacking for air, he had a cold sweat running down his face, as he just took into account that he almost died. 
That wasn't just some petty thug. That was a real villain, someone who didn't care about anyone's life but his own. Kind of like how he's been towards people, especially Izuku. Itsuki. He now fell to his hands and knees, putting one on his chest, and felt that his heart was about to jump out of his chest. All Might ran to where the two Avildoers landed, but found nothing which made him growl out before speeding back over to Katsuki, helping him up. All Might. Young Bakugo, are you alright? He didn't say anything, he was just too shaken at the moment until the number one tapped him. He flinched but looked up at him and instantly, All Might knew that look. It was the look of fear in his eyes. All Might. Come, let's go get you checked out with Recovery Girl. The two began to leave, the boy being shaken a little, but. Whistle. He shivered, remembering the whistle tune, he didn't know why it made him go cold, but then he calmed down, forgetting about it for now. They left towards the nurse and explained the situation to her and the principal before telling him that everything would be fine. They apologized that he went through something that traumatic, but Kitsuki hated that. The patronage, he was scared yay, but he didn't want to be treated with such empathy. It pissed him off as All Might said. All Might. Young Bakugo. Kitsuki. I'm fine I'm I'm fine. I don't need your pity. All Might. He then received a ride home and when he opened the door, his mom saw what happened to his arm and asked. Kitsuki. What the hell happened? Kitsuki. He looked at her and honestly he felt more at ease. He only saw her this morning, but seeing her now just took the weight of today off of him. He was actually glad he got to see her. Mitsuki. Well explain yourself what the hell happened to you. Mitsuki. Sigh, keep it down, hag. Mitsuki. And stop calling me that I am still in my prime you damn brat, now, what happened? Mitsuki. Just some fight training against Izuku. Mitsuki stared at her son in shock, Inko's kid did this. She then chuckled and said. Mitsuki. Welp, you had it coming, all that abuse you did towards him finally bit you in the ass. Maybe now you learn that it isn't right to pick on people who aren't as fortunate as you. Mitsuki. Yay, yay, whatever. He then made his way upstairs with Mitsuki watching him and saying. Mitsuki. Ugh, seeing you all glum doesn't make this as good as it's supposed to. So what? You lost, did you expect to win every fight? Because if you did, you got more pride than me. Mitsuki. The blonde just ignored his mom and closed his door, bawling his fist. He didn't want to feel the way he felt today, and he needed to make sure that he wouldn't anymore. That mysterious guy from earlier told him something about fear that should be taken wisely. But it was frustrating. How can you even turn fear into strength? Almost a month has went by with everyone trying to find out who would be their class president. They all chose Midoriya first, but he suggested that they should have Iida as the president which they all agreed on, as Awa honestly didn't care all that much. But Iida did. As of right now, they were on the bus towards the USJ with everyone talking amongst themselves until Tsu said. Tsu. Hey Bakugo, I just noticed something, isn't your quirk a lot like All Might's? He and Izuku spat up the water they were drinking before he said. Hakan. And what the buck is that supposed to mean huh, Frogger? Ajiro. Yay that's right your quirk kinda is like All Might's, except you get hurt by it. Hakan. Shut up. Mina. Yay but I think Izu's power is way cooler. Toru. Yay that light was so pretty. Hakan. GRR if you're gonna make somebody the center of attention pick one damn it. Tsu. Izuku, can you show us? Enki. Wait he can do that. Momo. I didn't expect for him to have that much control over his quirk. Izuku. Oh ah well. Iida. I would like to witness that. Siro. Yay man, show us. Sado. Yay. Izu. Oh okay. He then put out his hand as sparks started to fly before a shining ball of light appeared in his hand. Everyone awed at his power, smiling or being interested as Tor leaned forward. He knew the girl was invisible, but he could also tell that she was trying to reach out for it so he said. Izuku. Don't touch it. They all looked at him as she seemingly retracted her hand back. Izu. Well, you see, my light holds a lot of heat to where it'll burn you. So, I've been training hard to at least get it under control. The closest I've gotten was for it to not be so hot around people. They then looked back at the light feeling a cozy warmth coming from it before Siro said. Siro. Well, it looks like you've been working hard. Jiro. Yay, it's just warm. Su. So that's what that heat was the other day. Pachako. It was your quirk. Aizu. Yay. Su. Wow, you really were working hard on it. Mina. Yay, but are you sure you're just not Exagera ouch? Mina waved her hand around trying to get rid of the heat from her touching Izuku's light. She then put her finger in her mouth while Ichako said. Ichako. It burned you. Aizu. I told you not to touch it. Mina. Heck yeah his quirk is crazy hot. Ajiro. Then why did you touch it? Enki. 
Yay, he just warned us. Mina. Well, I thought since Bakugo took it, then maybe I can. Bakugo. What you trying to say I'm weak bubblegum I'll kick your ass. Momo. Still though, I wonder exactly how hot it is. Momo then pulled out a pencil and hovered it over the ball of light before dropping it. As soon as the tip made contact, it started to disintegrate at an alarming rate. They all ooed like children before Siro looked at Bakugo saying. Siro. And you took that to the face. You one tough bastard. Packin. You damn right I am. They then reached the USJ with 13, telling them exactly what was gonna happen, but then something happened. Some black purple-ish portal opened up which got everyone confused except for Katsuki. He had a feeling that it was an attack and he was right. Katsuki looked down at the large group of obvious villains, but one in particular caught his eyes. The man with the hood. He took it off to show a very disturbing appearance that the blonde knew he didn't have earlier, while Izuku also looked down at the people. He knew for a fact that they weren't supposed to be there and looked at 13 who seemed to glare. Ajiro. Huh. So are those guys supposed to be here? Zero. Maybe they're playing as villains. Azawa. You all stay back. Momo. Is there something wrong, Sensei? Azawa. Those guys are not there for show, they're the real deal. Enki. Wait those guys are actual villains. Izuku balled his fist at them, but when he looked at Katsuki, the blonde had a death glare with a hint of fear that took him a little by surprise. He traced his eyes towards the one standing in the back with severed hands on his face and knew that whatever was his ex-friend's distress had to do with him. Itsuki growled and shook which got everyone's attention as Azawa demanded. Azawa. Don't you even dare. You kids are to stay up here. 13, can we contact anyone? 13. No, communications are down. This was planned. Azawa. No doubt they're after all might. Iida. Iida. Ah why yes sir. Azawa. I'm going to be asking a lot of you, but I need you to leave and make your way back to the school and warn the staff about this. Iida. But what about? Katsuki. Go. Iida looked at the angry blonde and saw that the fear in him was increasing by the second. He then nodded and ran for the exit while Izawa made his way down fighting the villain with extreme precision and grace. They were all watching their teacher as he knocked villains away more and more, but then they heard. Iida. Damn it. They looked back and saw that Iida was still there with them. They all turned to him to see that there was another villain, and by his look, Katsuki and Izuku could tell that he brought them all there. Kurajiri. Hello, my name is Kurajiri, and I am with the League of Villains. I know it's impolite, but we've decided to infiltrate this haven of justice for the known symbol of peace. Katsuki growled at the guy but kept his eyes on the two main threats, of course he was after all might. Izuku's hands and arms then started to glow, but before he could do anything, Kurajiri saw that this boy might be a problem, so he started to envelop him and some others, before saying. Kurajiri. You're quite eager. All Might is not here, but that doesn't mean that we will just stop and go home. We'll just have to make you all scream in pain until he hears you. Itsuki shook more and more with anger, and everyone saw, but no one could understand why he was like that. Kurajiri gave the boy a glance, but then the blonde lit up with the light one for all. In an instant, Katsuki broke out of Kurajiri's hold, freeing Ichako, Ijiro, and Shoto before booming off over all the villains and Azawa. Azawa. The hell is he doing? Ijiro. Hey. Izuku. Ichako. What are you doing? Iida. Bakugo. 13. Damn it. Speeding past all of them, the blonde's main target was inside as he wind his fist up. The Nomu was right there, looking at the large bastard as he slammed his fist into his face with so much power that destruction started to pick up around them. Everything was leveled as Katsuki landed and started to attack it again with a blow to the stomach, with his bruised arm from the power he put out as he yelled. Katsuki. I'm not afraid of you oh. Shigaraki. Haha, <laughs> it's that kid again. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video.and have a fantastic day bye.